And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome. My name is Hockey. Today I'll be casting alongside Kronos. Hello, Kronos. Hello, Hockey. That was uh, pretty, pretty quick for us to get online. But however, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. Crown League Week 7. First game of tonight is Top Esports versus Flying Eagles Academy. I know they call themselves an academy, but I know they produce some good talent, don't they? They do, they do. They're pretty tough as well in the league. But before we get into that match, I actually have some clips to review. And one of the clips is me from the Team Zephyr. I was playing, I had casters, and this is me on Grok. And you're going to see something hilarious there. Let's play the clip. That's oh me on Grok right there. I have the wall charge. I see the carry, and I try to go to a carry with a flicker. And yeah, it was not the best. You know, carry has too much mobility, and it's kind of painful to catch her. Uh, wow. Second. No, I, I hear excuses. I hear only excuses. <laughs> I mean, listen, listen. I, I I prove myself. All right, this is the second clip right there. Look at this. I I prove myself here. Let's play the clip. Do mm -hmm. I see the hare trying to dive, and I just catch him. That it's just as simple as that. I put a wall so I can stun him, and there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Stun him under the towel with the wall charge, you know, make sure the hair doesn't get out whatsoever. And now we have two pretty funny clips that I, I, I would like to show. First off is from the top esports, the teams that are going to play today. And you have Matsu here on the Tigreal doing Sacred Hammer. But, um, yeah, it's quite oh. a... <laughs> yeah, it's quite you know, that, that's, that's a beautiful moment right there. You know, he's trying to get that, <laughs> trying to get that workout going, get that cardio that he has to push himself. And that carries that big shield, that big hammer around. You got to get some movement to warm up in your body. Get the I mean, instant flicker teleportation. I would say, oh, you know, warming up is good. But when you do it a bit too much, <laughs> like... Yeah, I think he uh, he warmed up for a bit too much here. We're going to see another Sacred Hammer flicker here. And it's just the same as this one. <laughs> That's, so we have a you know, brawl happening here. The game is just going as normal. Uh, up up until... Wait a minute. Hold on. All right. Yeah, thank you, Parallel. I think he got the wrong clip. <laughs> All right. Our parallel uh, probably got the wrong clip. I think you renamed the wrong one. <laughs> you got the wrong one, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got the wrong one. <laughs> uh, try to find it. Try to find it. Maybe if you like take one clip, like take one random clip, and it could it could potentially be it. Yeah, yeah, there, that's it. <laughs> Uh, this is the clip, I think. So we see an implosion coming in from Matsu here, catching uh, Joy. Uh, Zane TZ unfortunately wasn't able to do much here, but now Matsu is going to get the conceal in there. Watch this. There it is, going in, doing cardio, and there it is, just like Kronos said. You got to get that workout going. <laughs> Hey, yeah. hey, how do you, how do you think how do you think he says so buff man he's such a big guy he he's he's the a warrior a true warrior never <laughs> hides behind the brush that's what his dialogue says even you know he he's sticking to his word <laughs> trying to go in get that instant teleport with that big sacred hammer trying to push everyone out of his way just to yeah. make sure they're clear you know dude, that's what you call you got to put him on uh, traffic duty he likes he likes pulling traffic. <laughs> I mean, he's big for a reason. I look up to him. I wish to be as muscular as Tig one, uh, one day. But yeah, apart from that, uh, before I end it here, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like the stream. Uh, let's get into the games. Uh, make sure to check out the TikToks and etc. And I uh, will see you during the game.
And we are live, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Esports of the Flying Eagles Academy. Hello, Kronos. Hello, hockey. We are here in the draft, ladies and gentlemen, Top Esports on the blue side, and we have Flying Eagles Academy on the red. Seems like it's going to be a great game so far. A lot of confusion building up to this, but right now in the draft phase, taking out Guinevere and Minotaur, and also this Joy. Hey. For the side of Top Esports, we have iPrince, Harold Easy, Matt, so Xiao, and Q, uh, Q. And I think uh, this is the first time I probably see Xiao, or maybe I haven't guessed him before. Uh... Okay, that's a name change. He's been here. I don't remember who Xiao, but he's been here. And for the other side, for the side of Flying Eagles Academy, we have Kakashi, GGA, King Sama, Lena Nomana, and Dobby, which is the first time we see Kakashi here. So let's see how this is going to play out. I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah, I am excited too, but you know, after casting for a few, uh, we're, we're already week seven in the tournament. We've been casting quite a lot of games hockey. You've been doing a lot. And uh, from all of this that we've seen, you know, I've yep, been seeing yep. a pattern come out of these teams, especially top esports. They do not like going against this Minotaur. Every game that they play Minotaur is a constant ban. So you will know that you know that they do not want to go against a AoE knockup CC when it comes to team fights. So they do not like team fights and they like pickoffs. And that's what the other team are utilizing. Taking away the Nolan, taking away the Joy to make sure that you do not give top esports their comfort picks. And that will means uh, that that brews a recipe for success for the other side. I like your analysis there. I do agree here. They do like to play for some pickoff here. It looks like one of one of out of the five of the pickoffs here is CC taken out by Shao. And keep in mind the Guinevere ban is actually a crucial ban because that targets King Sama. He is actually like I think was top global one Gwyn at some point or got top global two. And they know about that. They did their homework. They've seen through the Flying Eagles Academy and they checked out what they can ban, what's their comfort. So it looks like top esports are going in today you know not leaving a chance for them but let's see if um flying eagles academy have a way to reply to this i will find out right now they're picking up this cc that goes in the exp lane top esports and vexana actually leaving the aurora open i'm not really sure why they let the aurora go they pick up this ruby that's a really great exp laner can be flexed into the wrong position as well but right now i do feel like top esports if I Prince is up for it, he will pick up that Aurora only because you have such massive AoE CC and you can always play that in two different ways. The utility type of mage, you play with the damage mage, and looking at the way they're going right now, they want to pick up this Frederick. Let's see, they do pick up that Frederick pretty instantly alongside the Angela. And last time we've seen Angela with top esports, this was pretty good, especially I Prince on Angela mid. So that could be the case where we see another Angela Arlot combo. That was pretty dangerous, uh, pretty crucial. So let's see what uh, top esports are cooking here. Uh, on the other side, though, for the Academy, they do have one last pick before the second band phase. And I probably think they're gonna go for, yep, there it is, the Ixia. Layla gets the Ixia for herself, one of his best here and his comfort hero here have something cooking on the other side I like this Angelo pick coming in so you know for a fact that it is gonna be some crazy drafts coming through but at the moment seems like the second phase of the bands are up and they want to take up the one one from here and uh, rightly so because they do not want to give free rain free damage when it comes to this attack speed and now taking out the Tigreal. So you can tell the fact that top esports do not like AoE CC. The way they're drafting, there is no Tigreal, there's no Minotaur. I mean, if Atlas was in the meta, you'd be taking off the Atlas. So yeah, you don't have Brock. So I mean, they're is... taking out you as much AoE. It doesn't even have to be CC at this point because there's still an x -Borg in there and possibly a Gulliver, which is also CC, but there's also AoE without it as well. So this is a pattern for those of you who are going to fade face top esports in the future you want to take a look you, they do not like aoe cc i mean i understand it's just aoe in general but if you take a look at it they do not like getting you know getting into uh, getting into team fights that that or like team fights that can actually change the face of the game but right now barrett's being picked by the side of flying eagles academy is something that goes to show that they want to have that suppression coming in and matsu with the novaria and q going for the roger when was the last time you looked at a roger hockey 
uh, pretty a long while ago. Not that long though. I've seen it definitely a few times this season. But in terms of the Crown League, I've seen it a few weeks ago. And actually, um, well, I heard there was a Roger uh, yesterday, though I wasn't there. Well, I think as in the SV Monarch match, they played Roger, though I wasn't there. I wasn't watching, unfortunately. But last time I casted a Roger, I think we had like an insane Roger for the side of Flying Eagles, if I remember. It was a ham, uh, Hamdex on Roger, if I remember at the time. And yeah, he was pretty good on Roger. So let's see there. Let's see if Q is going to impress us with that Roger. As for the other side, Dobby takes out here. He takes a catcher for himself. Yeah, I like this uh, Kaja pick coming in only as a reply to the fact that a Roger has been picked up by the side of Top Esports. You know Roger wants to get aggressive, get into the, you know, wants to get down and dirty in these team fights. Wants to pounce in with a Lycan pounce and also having that ability to shred down armor pretty quick with HP based damage. So having this Kaja means that it is always a threat that this Roger will think twice before diving into any of these team fights. And what do you think, Hockey? Looking at the draft, what team is yours? Uh, I would have to go for the side of uh, Top Esports. Their draft is just a bit too dangerous if it works right. Especially having that Fredrin room just does a bit too much for them. I do see top esports. I see their plan, but at the moment I am looking at Flying Eagles Academy. You take away the individual skill and you put only the teams on the table. You know one of them is going to come out on top. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends of all ages, we are here in the land of dawn. Game number one, week seven, day three of Crown League. Top esports on the blue side, Flying Eagles Academy on the red, and we are here to have a brawl. Let's see how it's gonna end here. Both teams are pretty interesting, and this is definitely a match that I've been looking forward to. So let's see, we have Kakashi versus Dabai Prince in the mid lane here. One of them, they're looking to get for a fast oh, play, and ooh! Astral so Echo from top, <laughs> from I Prince just takes the blue buff here immediately, early invades, and a successful one. Well played, I Prince. But we are seeing, wait, a Roger Gold lane. It was the Roger Golden. I'm surprised too. I didn't notice that, but actually it still goes to show that they want to have a little bit of a bruiser, a big fighter in the gold lane, giving them a little bit of tankiness. At given the meta currently how it's going, nobody really likes squishy heroes. And at this moment, Matsu aggressive with the level two and this Angela Ash should be. Looks like going to be caught in a rock in a hard place. About to go down, flickers out of harm's way. But will uh, Kakashi going in Ooh. deep, but doesn't really get the kill. I'm not Pretty sure what they were thinking right there. That was so close. Pretty fortunate for Matsu, but Kyo on the other hand is being poked heavily and the first blood goes for the Flying Eagles Academy as King Sama gets a really nice gank in there. It was a 1v1 in the top lane indeed. Oh, that was a, that was a good gank coming in too. Yep, a pretty successful gank here. He had to repay that blue buff being taken away from him. I think on the gank, a successful one is more than enough for him to catch up. So uh, yeah. let's see here. We have the first turtle coming up, and I feel like top esports could get a better positioning right now. They have the Astro Echo. I Prince does the Astro Recall, revealing the entire side of Flying Eagles Academy, um, showing that his team can get a more comfortable position. Want to get the vision quite early, knowing that your jungler is going for the turtle. Harl TZ actually getting it low. Appraisers Rat gets the turtle as well. Trying once again to get that blue buff with the Astro Recall. I Prince misses out on this time. Actually forcing the retribution from King Sama. And there the recall taunts trying to put a little bit of pressure. But if you focus your attention to the gold lane, Leila Nomana actually pushing Q back. The power of this Ixia against this Roger proving to be... Not such a hot pick coming in from top esports. Uh, I mean, Leila is global X here yeah, that season and this season. He's been spamming it for so long now, so he knows his stuff here. He knows when to engage. He actually knows his limits on X yeah, and I quite respect his X yeah, gameplay. So is his Leila. So let's see here as W the Divine uh. Judgment Flicker is getting Kyu. Is Kyu in trouble? Nope. Hard Guard kind of saves him and does get out of the full barrage. Though. 
pretty close here for Kiyu. Looks like the fight is still going on as the Astro Echo is over. And Harold is in a bad position, but gets the Appraiser's Rest. Gets the whole entire flying yields the Kami low. Takes out King Sama, followed up by the Lycan Pounds. Kiyu gets Dobby here. Does not go for more. It's too low HP here. And looks like they do win the Brawl here. Up top, is he looking for a Snipe here? Looking for an Astro Echo here? And uh, almost gets it on Layla, but instead we'll be getting Kakashi here. Oh, uh, Kiyu, he does not have the Lycan Pounds. Never mind, get to there it is, dives Leila, and looks like Top Esports just dominates that fight completely, a top lane for themselves. Yeah, that was a big mistake coming in from the side of Team Flying Eagles, right? They wanted to get that kill onto Q quite early, but the, the hard guard making sure that Q survived was actually crucial for this team fight that followed up from Top Esports. They decimated Flying Eagles right there now firmly in the driver's seat. 11.7k gold and the Flying Eagles 10k mark just now. So now you know that this big ultimate from Kaja is going to be important once again. They're going for the fight. Harl TZ missing out of Retribution Battle. Hard Guard being hovered around. Turtle is up. But we'll see who gets the turtle indeed. Looks like the turtle might go for the side of top esports once again as they win the positioning here, you know, get the vision they need. But on the opposite side, there is a top lane gank cooking. Take it up, Kronos. Oh, they're trying to get the top lane gank going, but not able to do so. But the turtle does go towards a Harl TZ. Dobby here hovering around knows that the divine judgment is a powerful tool. Hard guard being hovered over Q. Dobby looking at that, actually backing away. There's it, it's just a game of chess right now. <laughs> and whoever makes the wrong move at the moment will be the one to fall. And you know they want to bait out Dobby. They want to bait that flicker. They want to bait that divine judgment. Because once that is done, it is free reign for this Roger to go in and pounce his way like the wolf and werewolf he is to get all these kills. And Dobby finally trying to bait something out but not able to do so. Harl TZ using the dash to try and get something out. It's just, it's just baiting one after the other. It's about who makes the first move. And seems like the first move will always fail because that was the first big team fight that happened. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, 1v1 between the Uh. <laughs> 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 uh, sorry, we had a uh, glitch in the background here. One of the, the background. What looks like um, Dobby is in trouble here. Hard guard on Harl TZ. You know, Dobby has to escape. He's pretty low. But that now puts Ixia in a really tough position. Leila, no mana. May or may not get ganked here as we speak. And there it is, immobilized by Matsu uh, here. And is taken uh, out by the rest of the duo here. Kyo yeah, and Leila, no mana. Leila Nomana actually thought the minion will go down immediately after getting that skill on, but not able to do so, and that really cost them. And you can see the fact that Top Esports realized what the priority is, but bot lane, I'm offended onto Zhao. They're trying to do with the Daytona's welcome. The dash was there, but able to get out of harm's way is Zhao on the CC right now. They're trying to put some pressure in the bot lane, but not able to do so. Dobby realizes how important he is, but every time he tries to do something, his flicker gets baited out. There is the heart. No. Oh. Oh, the Lycan Pounce gets the kill. <laughs> Actually, Iprince gets it. But right now, Eternal Guard coming out and not really able to do much. They're trying to do as much as they can to clear the waves. But the pressure is on from top esports. Appraises Wrath, not enough damage to take down Ka Kakashi. But here, Lycan Pounce with the Hard Guard going in towards deep between the second turret. And there's the reply coming in for Flying Eagles. But they're being split apart. They're not sure who to target. The communication is not on point. Seems like there's just a newly formed team today. They're trying to dash out full barrage, trying to get some damage, but the threat from Q is just too much with all this damage that he's trying to put out. And I Prince with the Astro Recall. Once again, Q goes in, flickers, Lycan Pounds, trying to get a kill, but not able to do so much. Mm. In. And will he get it? There it is. Dobby with the divine judgment, but nobody home. Nobody's there to get the support. Dobby will be by himself. Oh, in on the bot lane, they get it. The fight going in, in the mid lane and killing Ooh. spring goes. The appraiser's rat gets the kill indeed. They get two for nothing in the side of top esports and they take that mid lane turn. They are dividing and conquering at their best. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, some consolation coming out from GGA, getting that bot lane tier one turret, but will that be enough? They're trying to get as much as they can. Team fight is breaking out. GGA looks like we'll go down. Hockey, I'm not uh. sure what to say. Seems like... 
Top the lack, I feel the like it's the lack of communication coming in from Flying Eagles Academy that put them in this rough position right now as they speak. But on the other side, well played to the top esports. As, as intense as uh, things got, they were managed to just take care of it pretty easily as well. Like, they didn't struggle with that at all. And yeah, they, that proves that they are the top indeed. They know what they're doing. They know how to take care of intense situations. I mean, it does take a lot to become the top here. And looks at, speaking of top, he looks at the bottom lane. GGA is in trouble once again as Ooh. he is dived by the entire top esports here. Kiyu gets the kill here with a like and pound. Though on the other side here, Shao looks like he might be in trouble. King Sama does have his Deton as well, go, and looks like the others are just going in with that King Sama hard guard coming in with Divine Judgment from Dobby, Eternal Guard coming in from Kakashi, the Vengeance oh, from Zhao, Critical, but not much he can do here. He take he does take out Kakashi though, but on the reply on the other side. It's not gonna go well, a counter gank coming in from the side of top esports is just pushing them away and like you take out Shao and you'll take your entire team here and successfully does take what they need, they take the mage and the marksman Kakashi and Leila no mana so that's like more than enough actually. Looks like King Sama here getting poked heavily, Matsu is being a bit too aggressive, My, may die here actually, he has to use a flicker and oh, wow. I'm offended with a flicker from GGA, unfortunately doesn't get anything here, he tried to go for Matsu but misses horrendously, pretty yeah. unfortunate for him. Trying to make a stylish play GGA, trying to show off a little bit, showboating, but didn't really work out in their favor, Bino on the top, oh my god, they're trying to get the Lord, but... The Astral Eye was able to d help dodge that entire Daytona's welcome. And here, a team like Top Esport will smell blood and they want that. Meanwhile, the Lord is marching down the bot lane hockey. I feel like this is all Shiro is going. It's not going the way that Flying Eagles planned out. I would I would say this potentially could be the game, but having an Exia and a Barrett and a Vixana, they have a pretty good wave clear. It's that they need to keep themselves alive before the Lord comes in, and it's pretty tough when you're playing against Q, Roger, you know, one hero that can just dive in and have a support from Harl TZ, the Astro, but Ooh, looks Deton's like welcome. Deton's welcome is taken, Matsu is out before the Lord. <laughs> Oh no, the Divine Judgment, Chao as well, double kill goes in for Kakashi, but oh, Kiyo tries to like flicker and like and pounce, unfortunately doesn't do much with it, what do you think is gonna happen with the Lord here? Oh, that Lord is still coming down the bot lane, nice and slow, but not able to take make the most of their opportunity, top esports as they've lost two of their key players in this, the Peeler with Zhao on that CC and this Angela who just respawned right on time and the damage coming in from iPrince just being a nuisance completely with this Novaria Astro recalls after Astro recall and in that team fight actually it was a little overextended coming in from top esports biting off more that they can chew and Dobby making the most of it they do have the CC they have the suppression it all comes to the how they can make use of these tools and at the moment you can say team top esports is just on a different level when it comes to skill and speaking of skill right now, we have the Astro Echo coming in with the curtain call. Looks like a communication from Tommy Esports is just planning to take out King Sam here. Still going in. Ooh, oh, I'm a fan of Flicker Spiker. coming in from GGA. Kiyo does have the Lycan Pounces. Looking for an opening. Successfully gets one. Oh, Two over here. Is. Gets Adobe. Almost gets laid on the mana, but goes for Kakashi instead. There it is. Double kill. Triple kill coming in from Kiyo on the back line here. But unfortunately, he's taken out by the towers. Matsu looks to be in trouble with Flicker. He has it there just in time to get out. And what a fight coming in from Top Esports. Though they will still apply pressure to try to push out as much as possible even without Q here. Yeah, they're trying the best they can. GGA will be by enough time to clear the waves mid lane. Oh, not able to crash the passive. The tower is able to take it off, so they do have enough time. There it is. Barrett's is back, and so is this Kaja. Dobby and King Sama will be able to help clear the lane. Dobby posing to be the biggest threat right now with that flicker divine judgment. I'm telling you, Hockey, if Dobby gets the right target, then it's all she wrote, but at the moment, they should be focusing all that they can on Eye Princess Novaria, staying out of range every single team fight. And now it looks like they want to get something going 13 seconds before the Lord spawns. And you know, Flying Eagles want to contest this one. It's gonna be a tough one for the Flying Eagles Academy here. Though, if Dobby does successfully manage to get um, Kiyu, this could be the game changer. All they need is to neutralize Kiyu in this fight. 
But it, it they look a bit uh, like their positioning is not pretty good here. I don't think they're gonna catch up to it, considering you have a Barretts, something that is uh, not mobile enough to catch with this. And looks like the Lord does fall for the side of top esports. This could Ooh. potentially be either a long game or right now this could be the end. Yeah, but at the moment I feel like top esports they can they're still prone to making a mistake. We've seen them choke a little bit in the late game, but right now. They want to be there. They're trying to taunt. There it is. The dash coming in. Oh, they're not trying to do the Daytona's welcome yet. King Sama saving it for the right time. Able to clear the waves off. Harl TZ actually Ooh. gets pushed back. But the Astral Echo is there providing all that vision. Getting the slows. Increasing the hitbox range. And right now, the Lord marching down the mid lane. We want to see it crash. Not able to fall. Barrage is being used. They're clearing the waves. Dobby does have the Divine Judgment. He has the Flicker available. It's now time for the target. King Sama mm. taking so low. CC gets that kill. And GGA trying to do as much as they can. Eternal Guard comes out. There's the I'm Offended along with the Divine Judgment. Vengeance being used. Lycan Pounce trying to get the kill. Too much to deal with. The Terrify is there. Q is almost taken. That will go down. No heal not. Appraisers have been used as well. And that's the choke I was talking about, Hockey. They're not oh able my to gosh. end the game once again. Flying Eagles are able to defend minion waves crashing in from both sides. I am offended on towards Zhao once again, able to defend that turret. Layla no Layla Amana will go not go down. Oh, this is oh, oh, so close. And the Lycan Pound's not enough. <laughs> able to flicker out. GGA using all that they can. The passive of the maximum extreme able to survive. Layla no Mana as well. Now, the way that Flying Eagles are able to drag this game here on out will show that perseverance that they have. Looks like top esports will have to wait for another Lord. They're getting impatient, Hockey. They might be able to make a mistake <laughs> right now. The, I just did both teams, both low, um, like it's super intense, so close in this short moment. And this could have been like, uh, I, I almost thought the top uh, esports th threw the game there. But then they came back, they fought back, almost got Layla, almost got Kakashi, almost got Dobby. And it's just like going back and forth. It's like a, a game of chess, but battle mode time. You know, they're just playing really fast. So let's see yeah. here now. It comes all, all comes Look down to the next TV. 40 seconds. Look and at the let's position see. of Harl TZ. Look at the position of Harl TZ. Will he get? No, he's getting out of there. Dobby is the biggest threat, taunting the enemies right now. Harl TZ wants to get the knockup on towards Dobby. They're trying to get them with the pins from maneuver, but GGA taking quite low. The hard start is there. Lycan Pound's coming out. Appraiser Wrath is there. They get Ixia. They get one after the other, falling like dominoes. Three kills go down. This is the fourth one that's going to fall. Triple kill on towards Q. And Dobby and King Sama can only watch because right now they are stuck within their base. They're trying to do as much as they can, but will King Sama be able to clear the big mid wave that's coming in? There's one cannon, two cannons, two of the small ones. They're, they're not able to do so. Mega kill on this oh Roger. Oh my gosh. Get a full five man wipeout. That is an unofficial savage, ladies and gentlemen. First <laughs> game of week seven, day three, top East. Sports, take the victory in dominant fashion. Well played, Top Esports. Well played, Q. Unannounced Savage, but a pretty good one. They dominated that all the way through from start to finish. What a game from Top Esports. Yeah, I mean, Hockey, if you take a look at the builds, right, we didn't really get much time to talk about it, but this Roger going for the Trinity build, the Holy Trinity, getting that attack speed along with the Wind Talker towards the end to make sure to take that base. And right now, the way the meta is shifting, we've seen that the MPLs, nobody really wants to run the marksman in the goal lane. It's slowly shifting to these tanky fighters, and Roger might be the right answer, knowing that he is a marksman as well as a fighter at the same time. I think top esports might be finding a new meta. I mean, it could be top meta right now as we speak. Uh, it could be the best. Maybe they are cooking something and damn, they cooked right. Oh, for the side of Flying Eagles Academy, though, they had a really unfortunate match. But let's see if they're going to reply on the next match here. Let's see what their answer is.
And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Match number one, game number two over here. What a tough first match for Academy here. They really tried their best to defend, but it got dominated by top esports from start to finish. Do you think they're going to have a chance here on the second match, reply, maybe learn from their mistakes from last game? I mean, it is time for redemption on the side of uh, Flying Eagles. They are an academy, right? They're trying to prove that they can do well, trying to get out the best talent that's there in the EU region. But for right now, they you're looking at the bands that are coming in. Once again, it's the same thing. Top Esports do not like this AOE CC that comes out. They take out the Guinevere, and surprise, surprise, I can predict their next two bands is probably going to be that Minotaur once again, and maybe an Xborg, who knows? <laughs> Could be the same bands once again, but let's see here as GGA or side Flying Eagles Academy are thinking and I'm gonna like guess they're gonna have to take something from last game and there it is CC being taken out here I mean Xiao was pretty nice on the CC pretty tanky and pretty annoying though I don't believe he was the biggest threat I feel like I Prince there was just making the, uh, top esports life 10 times easier with that Astro Echo and the constant Astro recalls yeah, that is true. A good mid laner can always dictate the pace of the game. And right now, I Prince is looking really uh, like a big threat with that Novaria. And I think that Flying Eagles will have to take out the Novaria, but they do not want to do that. They take out Minotaur on their side instead, actually giving an extra ban towards the side of top esports. So maybe they will go out, take, take out the Nolan, or is this just a play to leave the Nolan open? This could potentially leave the Nolan open, go something for uh, for something that they don't like actually, maybe another AoE, you know, an Xborg, Tig, Diggy, there's a lot more on the table and let's see which dish are they gonna eat out. Yeah, maybe take out, I would say just take out the Nolan, is this just too much of a threat that needs to be dealt with, but at the same time, if you shut down the Nolan quite early in the game, you will not have a problem, there it is, they take out the Vexana instead. I mean, Kakashi on the Vexano is kind of troublesome. The Hysterify, especially when it chains to other people, it's just it ruins top esports and causes them to, like, you know, struggle a little. So I, I would pretty much agree here with the Vexana pick. Kakashi is playing a bit too well on it, though, unfortunately, for the side of Academy, uh, due to communication issues, uh, the team play was not that huge for them. Yeah, but right now you want to have this first pick to be a quite a flexible one and seems like e Flying Eagles are thinking about it, not really sure which way they want to soar and they take that X4 instead. The GGA gets the X word here on the first pick, but let's see the reply coming in from t Top Esports. You still have the Ruby, you still have the Nana, the Novaria, the Nolan, as I was about Nolan. to say here. The Harold Nolan is Novaria. going to be pretty good on the Nolan as well. And Nolan there's Novaria. Just Oh, and Ovaria as well, Diggy, Tig, you have a lot of things on the table, and there it is Novaria from Iprince. You, you want to call the guy who predicts the best I am here. But at the moment, Hockey, you know <laughs> they want to flex this X board that can be in the X EXP lane as well as in the jungle. But right now, it seems like it's going to be in the EXP lane. They want to flex the jungle pick a little bit more. Maybe I would suggest go for a little bit of a bruiser fighter in the form of a Paquito. But at the moment, you don't really want to have a squishy marksman against this Novari who is being a problem <laughs> on iPrints. And I there want. it is. You have this d that picked up by King Sama. That is a perfect reply for this Nolan in the jungle that can be there, can have a 1v1 fight and can extend the entire thing. But at the moment, the question again is, who's going to catch I Prince? And there it is, the Claude. Oh, there it is. That's what's going to catch I Prince right there. As you just said, the Claude himself, the Blazing Duet on the back line. There it is. Let's see, though. It's, I think it's the first time I do see Leila no Mana on the Claude here. So I am, I'm pretty, uh, this is pretty interesting, actually. I mean, and I like that the Claude is going for as well. Changing up the Vengeance to the Sprint is the exact mindset that you need to have. Be aggressive against the Novaria. If you don't give, if you if you're not a threat to this Novaria, this Novaria can take this game by themselves, and that's what happened in the first match with I Prince on this Novaria. And once again, I'm not really sure that you know. I think I've seen Top Esports play this Arlot in the Rome position as well. I'm not really a big fan of it myself, but. If it works, you know, it works. But at the moment, we see that big, 
big tire grill that wants to go on a good workout with that good cardio being taken off the map. <laughs> I agree with you here. Uh, unfortunately, I can't see the draft. <laughs> <laughs> well, without the, it's all right. It's all right, hockey. I'll take it from here. But at the moment, you see this. Uh, uh, if you picture it in your head, you have this Nolan that's being taken out. I mean, not Nolan. Sorry, uh, Nathan that's being taken out from the side of Flying Eagles. But at the same time, now the final ban coming in from Top Esports. Maybe yeah, they want to focus their attention. Focus their attention a little bit on the roam position. Maybe take out. Something that is going to be a problem in the form of an Angela, but they want to take out this Faramis. I'm happy to announce that I can finally see the draft again. <laughs> He's just not showing it. But yeah, I have, now we have an, an, an ooh, Nathan ban here, Tig and Faramis. Though there is still some on the table as well. Looks like the last ban for a type of Flying Eagles Academy. They're looking to ban something threatening, something that is also an XP or a roamer, maybe even more marksman at this point. Take out like a carry or a Bruno, something, or maybe a Leslie. Like, I know Leslie is quite weird, but she's one of the best picks against Cloud if played right, but it looks like it's the Ruby instead. Yeah, the Ruby ban is a good one. They, they're they trying to see that this if this Arla is actually going to go into the wrong position. And uh, Zhao here picking up the Paquito. I like this Paquito pick only for the fact that you can be so aggressive in the early game if you're able to take out this early uh, lane cut in uh, the first wave, then you're going to have free reign into the opposition jungle, especially going against the Diroth, who's not really fast in this jungle clear. It will be really important to see how this first wave works out in the EXP lane. And now on the other side, Flying Eagles, what will they go for? They need some bit, a little bit of more sustain. They don't have the promise. Maybe an Angela that can be played in the roam position and put maybe an Aurora in the mid lane. I could potentially guess Dobby would go for something super, super tanky, and there it is. The Kufra, you could also go for the Grok, maybe other tanks, and the Kufra is pretty good here, so considering it's against Paquito, against uh, Harold Tz's uh, Nolan over here, and the Nana pick coming in, a pretty risky pick, considering that you're dealing against a, um, a Nolan here that can easily go to the back line so i'm pretty interested here i'm pretty i'm pretty excited about this nana pick from kakashi and i want to see how it's going to play out yeah i like this nana pick coming in dobby with the kufra yes you have the bouncing gum ball that can be a threat towards the paquito the arlot as well as this nolan but seems like top esport once again going for the non-marksman route in the goal lane and I feel like that will be a something that the meta is going to be shifting towards. I've seen that happen, Never but mind. they're opting to go for the Layla. I am not sure what I am seeing today. But mind you, after Layla got those slight revamps and differences, it is a big threat in the goal lane, especially with an extended range. You know Claude wants to come in with the Art of Thievery, trying to get that extra bit of attack speed and the movement stacks. But if Layla is able to get those projectiles on you, it's going to be a big problem. I agree with you, especially taking Layla against Global 1 Layla. <laughs> so, I want to see how he's going to deal against his own here, especially with an experienced team and a pretty tough gold laner Kyu here. I actually did not expect the Layla pick here, I'm quite excited, though I would say it's quite a dangerous pick, considering that you're dealing with not only Claude, but Exborg here with the last insanity, maybe if you're caught by Kufra that could be troublesome, or the Dyrth. So uh, let's see how this is going to play out, let's see if Matu can take air of his mid and his gold lane at the same time here. And as we are here, ladies and gentlemen, in the Land of Dawn at this time, we have Top Esports on the red side, one game up in this best of three series against Flying Eagles, who are on the blue side, have their backs against the wall in this series right now. And Matsu here, aggressive with this Arla in the Rome position, providing vision for his team. As you can see, the Paquito, Xiao in the EXP lane, trying to get that cut. And GGA realized that quite early and made sure that did not happen. Losing out a little bit of HP in the process, but they're trying to see the rotation that goes towards the Lethal Wanderer in the early game. Carl TZ is there, show King Sama trying to get there a little bit at the same time. And now we see the first fight that might be breaking out soon, Hockey. 
I feel like Matsu is waiting to take someone out, you know, maybe poke him a bit, make him go back so he can just win on the vision wise and get better rotation in. But uh, looks like Dobby does, unfortunately, does not get the Tarn's uh, revenge. Low lane, looks low like lane, a 1v1 low lane. coming in from Kiyu oh. and Leila, and the first blood from Kiyu over here. Getting the Leila pretty, uh, the Claude pretty so easily, has the flicker still, but is taken out by King Samas here, does not get out, not even a flicker could save him from that. Ooh, no. Tyrant's Revenge coming in, I Prince with the flicker here, still getting chased by King Sama, but unfortunately he just doesn't have the distance. We'll have to poke Matsu instead, maybe take his flicker out, let's see here, is Matsu in trouble? Yeah, might be, there's Molina, and right now will Matsu go down, seems like not, Dobby wasn't able to get it, but meanwhile off camera in the bot lane, Harl TZ getting a kill on towards this Xborg in GGA at the moment, so they're trying to get their priority to right, get the little bit of extra buff in the EXP lane, give that EXP lane a little bit of free roam, and then it'll be a problem, meanwhile in the top lane, Q will go down to the Abyssum Strike of this King Sama, and they're trying to get into the opposition jungle and invade. But at the moment, Harlot is going to go for the turtle. Meanwhile, the mid lane, Kakashi almost going down. Taking to the quarter bit of HP and Xiao here in the middle brush in the river. Trying to get a little bit of damage. Astral Echo coming out reveals the positioning. The passive is proc of this Anana right now. I Prince going in deep for this Astral Recall. Not able to do so. Being protected by Dobby is Kakashi. And at the moment, we want to see... That they're focusing their attention to their goal lane. I feel like they have to neutralize Q. Ooh, final slash flicker coming in from Matsu with a destruction rush followed up. And there it is, a Hasteriko almost taken out. Leila is pretty low on HP here. Let's see if Iprince can just catch it on time. Oh. And there it is. He has the distance, has the range, has all he needs just to finish off Leila here. Not even the sprint is triggered here, unfortunately for Leila. But on the other side, Fracture coming in, taking out King Sama here. Harl is going in aggressive with that no lane. He knows that he got a bit of farm from pushing the bot lane here, getting the the gold. Oh, and there it is, another crap. final slash. Dobby in trouble. Double kill going for Halt Easy. And this is uh, this has been going pretty horribly for the side of Academy here. Leila No Mana once again is poked here by Matsu. Astro Echo, there it is. Oh, Astro oh, Recall. Oh. Leila No Mana in trouble. R3 just to get out. It goes back in. They're pretty risky, but considering that the team doesn't see him yet, or maybe they do. They do see him. Meteor he has, he has to recall. recall. Is going for it. Almost gets oh, flicker oh, Ricky. Oh, oh. Ooh, <laughs> gets a auto attack and does not get laid out here. Leila is lucky to survive on real HP. On the other side, King Sama does have all he needs to just take out Chow here. He is trying to help GGA after getting ganked twice. You know, I mean, giving. Uh, free roam special to an XP lane, especially for a Paquito. This is something you don't want to play. Like you don't want to play against that, knowing that he's such a mobile hero, really versatile hero. So you have to take care of that eventually, or it's just gonna become like the second ADC to the game. Yeah, but let's not forget we have a Layla that flickered with the Malefic Bomb, trying to get a kill. That was so aggressive. I've never seen an Im more immobile marksman be so aggressive. <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> you want to pay attention a little bit to the top lane. Tyrant's Revenge being charged up. Zhao, will he go down? Yes, there it is. Tyrant's Revenge, Tyrant's Rage, Bouncing Ball. The full mm -hmm. combo coming out. And the kill Ooh. goes towards Kakashi as the turtle is up. Meanwhile, the bot lane, GGA is cornered. Frog Armor is gone. Astro Recall missing. Astro Meteor. GGA, not uh. sure what he's thinking. Doesn't know where to go. Being competent to rock. A hard play, smart missiles coming out. There but it is. is. The engine from Matsu will get the kill. Meanwhile, the turtle will go towards King Sama with the retribution battle in the turtle pit. And right now, in the bot lane, the, melt, the Q trying to get a little bit of ahead in the <laughs> terms of the st structures. But <laughs> you can see destruction rush coming out. Final slash is there. Kakashi almost taken low. Malefic Bomb missing. Flicker, Astral mm. Meteor coming out from my Prince. But Titan's Revenge not able to take down my Prince at all. Able to get out of there with the Astral Recall. That is some good use of that mobility that comes in. And Dobby taunting with the recall. Seems like this Claude will go down in the top lane. Leila Nomana actually has to get out with the BMI using the sprint to get out of there as well. And now that, that was a. That was quite a series of uh, fights, but there it is, Dobby. <laughs> There's the more. <laughs> Molina Blitz coming out, and there is the kill. Kakashi will get that indeed. Astral Meteor from I Prince with the Astral Recall trying to do some damage, but seems like it's going to be a little quiet for now, Hockey.
It's just been a fight after fight in the bottom lane, in the mid lane, in the top lane, back to mid, there it is, bro. in the mid, once again, his last insanity of all though, but a shutdown from King Sava here, taking Harl TZ out once and for all, and this has just been an aggressive game for both sides, they're just taking every fight, fighting chance, they see, not even thinking twice about it, and there it is, a jump. King Sama tries to get as much kills as he can, you know, trying to get as much as he can out of the tires. I mean, he knows he's uh, pretty threatening and oh, knockout strike taken on GG. Unfortunately, GG is not able to do much against Shao here. You can say that Paquito is such a mobile hero and a troublesome one. And there is this oh, final slash, Lena no mana and Dobby in trouble, but Lena no mana always being chased by Kyu here. Never mind, Kyu will have to go back, and uh, Kyu is such an aggressive Layla. Abysmal Strike coming and taking him out, but I don't think I've seen a more aggressive Layla than Kyu here. And Kakashi on the other side, Molina Blitz just takes out Harl TZ ever so casually here. It's just another assassin kill. Yeah, you want to see these team fights breaking up. Both teams playing aggressive. King Sama with the Abyssal oh. Strike trying to do that. There it is, the Blazing Duet for the first time in the game. Doing a bit of damage, but the kill goes towards the side of the army for some reason. And now they get one <laughs> kill, and as the turtle is up, but they're trying to do their best to come back into this team fight. Crawling and scratching their way back into the series is Flying Eagles as they have the priority the turtle right now without their jungler. I'm not sure this is a wise idea. There it is Astral Echo with the Astral Recall coming. RLTZ does have the Retribution Ooh. and he gets the Destruction Rush was used as well. Last Insanity gets the kill and Nolan will go down. Leila Nomana trying to get as much damage as he can on towards I Prince. That's the only one that's been a big threat. 1-0-2. Again, not going down so far in this game. Flicker final slash coming out. And there it is. Uh, the Astro Recall. <laughs> they get that big kill on towards that mid lane. Retribution used on towards the Cannon Minion to make sure that they maintain that mid lane structure so that they'll have a little bit of priority in their jungle but not able to do so for long. Astral Echo coming out. They will lose their mid lane turret with Flying Eagle. But see, meanwhile, in the top side, Leila Nomana actually able to push off a little bit but will be responded by Xiao. Looks like for the side of top esports, despite doing a few to little no mistakes, they were able to come back for it and said, nope, let's show me our top and let's take back what we lost. And they successfully do here. Going for more aggression, GGA is in trouble. We'll have to use it less insanity to get up, but is that enough? Is that enough to get him out? There it is. Looks like in the mid lane, though, fights cooking. Fracture yeah. from Harl TZ just to clear Q. Over here, oh, looks like King Sama here with Abysmal Strike takes out Chow. And on the other hand, W the Titan's Revenge trying to get out. Is this enough? Nope, there it is. Titan's Revenge does not get anyone. It's taken out by Q here. Looks like the fight is still going on. Harl TZ wants more Fracture, does not catch anything. Oh, and Layla, Layla goes oh, back. That's pretty unfortunate for Layla. They do somehow still, <laughs> they take uh, out Matsu. All this for Matsu, but they just lost. It's like 4-4-2 four, four, here, and it's not good for the side of top eSports. I think they they got a bit too greedy here, really bad decision making, and that costed them a lot, and when I say a lot, I mean some pushing, some waves, some towers, that is not, that, that was not good, I I'm sorry, it's just not the best course of action here. I mean, I was about to say this mid game has probably been the most entertaining out of the ent all the other games of the tournament so far. But right now, Leila Nomana not really sure what he was thinking, going back with the BMI to make sure he get a little bit of damage, but did not have the Blazing Duet. So I'm not sure what the thought process was, maybe waiting for King Sama to go in with a Spectre step in first to make sure you get the armor shred, but not... The communication was not there, and they ended up losing a lot, but right now the Lord is up, and the top esports have got that started. They're getting the response from Flying Eagles, Dobby charging the Tyrant's Revenge, but there's this flicker final slash once again. The Fracture coming out, the damage is there. Ash Rico was used, and Q going berserk with uh, these basic attacks right now, and seems like they're on the hunt. And there it is oh with my gosh. the steel plate. They go in with the rift. The damage is too much for them to take. And right now they will fall like dominoes because their marksman is in the top lane and can only watch them fall as top esports putting on a display for us with that big team fight. Q has just gone crazy here, like a barbarian on the lane, you know, just hitting one after another here. Has gone berserk, like you said. It, this is the late game, Leila. This is the Leila that we love to see. 
Uh, the later we love to see Berserk with his Berserker's Fury, Wind Talker, Haas Squad possibly going in for the Blade of Despair or the Malefic Roar right now in the item build will be a big threat for them to deal with with this 5-3-5 KDA. Who said the first hero ever in the Mobile Legends Bang Bang wouldn't be a strong one? And the top esports Q proving it wrong, but so far the Lord is marching down the mid lane. Asher Recall from I Prince along with the Asher Echo doing so much damage. Damage, providing so much vision but will the lord fall before it takes down the mid lane yes it does and right now dobby trying to charge up the tyrant's revenge but not getting anybody but look at the positioning of king sama waiting for the right time to get either layla or the snowlin or i prince on this novaria and he gets harl mm. tz a wisdom strike missing out and the retribution was on point to make sure you get out of there and now they're splitting the map into two who will they chase will they go for the deer out or will they try to take down the turrets but right now final slash missing out thanks to the untargetability of the frog armor almost going down there <laughs> gga with the actual recall this match has been too close for comfort hockey you did kind of miss on the earlier uh, the structure rush coming in from Kyu, just melting Layla Ooh. down with the basic attacks as well. It looks like Kyu's just standing there. Look at that damage, even on Dobby. Dobby just, Ooh. he's not safe from the critical damage coming in from Kyu. On the lot of damage here, the Malefic Roar comes in for Hall TZ here, does not have the penetration he needs. And we might see an engage Breaker. there. There's a final slash coming in from Matt, so last and Santi pop to it, blazing to it. Unfortunately, Layla does not catch anything and might be in Ooh. trouble. Never mind, does get out in time, avoids the destruction. Rush and this could be the wave of the game as they do not have King Sama. Let's see here. Dobby is looking for a jump, does get a Tyrant's Revenge, but is taken out instantly. A flicker is, is popped here. Leila no mana, it almost dies here, does avoid the S recall. It's like having so many close calls, but never mind. It's just back in there with the final slash coming in from Matt. So GGA over here with, a, with the last insanity. Is this enough to uh, hey, well, escape? Blood. There it is. But Dobby on the other hand does have the Q on the, on the wall here, but does not the have base. the base. <laughs> unfortunately does not protect the base does have Q but that unfortunately is not enough as for the side of top esports dominate another game this was like super chaotic we've seen I think like the most chaotic mid game we've had all league and that was such a great game but at the moment you know Flying Eagles actually played their best to their extreme. Let's give them a shout out indeed because at the moment against Top Esports to pull off such a draft, such a game was really good and MVP for me, MVP for me. I'm not gonna, I love the Layla pick but you have to give it eye prints on this Novaria. Two games, consistent performance, 4-0-6. I believe the first one is 4-0-6 as well. Not getting taken down on both with that big poke damage coming in. 28% damage hockey. I'm I mean, telling you, you what else? Just doing a lot. <laughs> He's just there. Always there when needed. <laughs> Top Eye Prince was just, well, I think, one of the best mid lane performances we've seen so far. Consistent, both matches, always there when the team needs him. Provides more support than anyone actually during these games. It's like he dominated the match and he was able to just provide and everything this team needed and the team just provided back and like we won't let you down and top esports came to just dominate both matches that way uh that was pretty insane now uh, let's get to the league table before we end here and for the league table as you can see top esports now winning this 2 to 0 are going to be tied up with both ascendo grimoire and as the monarchy so the top four are actually both just 15 points uh oh. That was uh, quite a special here. Nice game coming in from Flying Eagles Academy. I, they got my respect here. They tried their best. But now, let I will see you on the next match.
Hello everyone, it's me and Kronos, we are back here and we decided, you know, instead of waiting, let's have a fun caster 1v1 for the stream and for everyone to watch. And I'm 1v1 in Kronos, hello Kronos. Hey Lou, what's up? <laughs> so uh, before we 1v1, this is uh, mid lane only, uh, I think first to like, uh, maybe push for first tower or second tower? I mean, first tower then. No, no, first tower, first tower. Let's uh, okay, first let's to... Yeah, first Whatever. to push first tower, I think we gotta do like a best of three or best of five, I don't know, maybe depends. And now we have a wheel of every hero, whatever hero we get here is what we have to play. So let's go for the spin! Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Let's do, do it. something that's really good, give something that's entertaining. Uh, it looks like a Kaja! Oh, you kidding me, this, this, will be, this is gonna be like something different altogether. <laughs> Do we go for the Kaja here? Or do you want to respin it? I mean, we said we're gonna spin all MLBB heroes. We can do whatever it is. I mean, oh, let's... Oh, make, let's make a list. Let's make a list. Let's take it from like you know. Let's get from assassins on assassin marksmen on fighters. Right? Let, let's Mages. get the let's get a poll from the chat or ask chat to put in what they want us to play, and then they can Ooh. just type it all, and then we can type those heroes and have that as a one v one. We for could the next do that. two minutes, maybe, yeah. For the next two minutes, keep them engaged, though. All right, for the next two minutes, I want you all to type your hero recommendation, and we will be playing it on stream. Let's see here. A Guinevere, a Granger. Oh, I, I really want to play the Granger here. <laughs> you know what? Can I, can I go to the stream chat and type myself? <laughs> I did, oh my I, God, someone, someone, someone said Franco. Someone said Franco. Ooh. Hmm, I wonder who's that? <laughs> Why do Someone's like Gujan down there as well. <laughs> Why do you want tournament host for 1v1? What the fuck? We can play all skins. <laughs> yeah. Can we please have a tournament host? <laughs> oh my god. Is that a yes or is that a no? <laughs> 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 We're joking. If you don't want to host, it's fine. <laughs> let me eat, let me eat my sandwich, please. <laughs> Wait, what do we have the votes here so far? What's the votes? What the? So, it just died. Rest in peace. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, go. Respinning. Please, please, Gushin. Go on to Gushin. Give me a Gushin. What is this? Franco. Matilda! Hell no! <laughs> <All right. laughs> Hell no! <laughs> I just play... No roamers, that's it. You just play no roamers. No, bro. Okay, it's, okay. This is even more complicated, play... bro. Okay. I, I, I can kind of play Kagura, so I'm fine I, with that. I, I can play too, but I don't want to. It's, it's boring. It's just a lot of umbrella umbrella. <laughs> Eudora. I think that, that would be fun. That would be that fun. Would have, yeah, the would be fun one. Let's keep like spinning it and we like when we say stop. No, like just constantly spin. We get like one. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's use do use on. Right, use on. Use on. Use on. We didn't get a use on. To watch. Let's be entertaining to watch, <laughs> one. Yeah. Let's go for the use on one. Alright, use on it is. I think that would be oh, fun yeah. to watch. I, I haven't played Imagine Yuzong two dragons in a while. just chasing each other. Two dragons <laughs> just chasing each other. <laughs> Where is Yuzong? I can't find him. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I have to I have to change that. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, that's what. I, okay, I didn't know that. So. <laughs> Let's go. <sighs> Alright, Kronos, I'm gonna take you down. Let's see, let's see. Let's see if you know what you're doing, boy. I am, I do. Oh, you do know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let's see, let's see, let's find out. Let's see now, mid lane, first tower. Let's see how this is gonna go. I'm, I'm, I'm winning this. I love Yuzong, but I don't play him, so <laughs> that's something. 
What's up, Chronos? Where are you at? Where you at, boy? I am. I, I'm Come on, loser. I, I am chilling. You're not gonna find me. And you I'm say here. that and you come on yourself. I'm here. <laughs> it looks like we do have the same plan here. <laughs> Sub Chronos. Mm. Oh no. Mm, who was oh, no. oh, oh no, yes. no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm gonna try something really fun here. Hope it works. Okay, I hate myself. <laughs> Oh, you have the same idea! <laughs> no! I want to say not... something! <laughs> no! You know a trash player when you see one. Oh my god. Alright, that's it. I'm playing safe. <laughs> How? How does this hit me? Uh, oh, nah. It's, it's bro, skill. It's dude, skill. Dude, dude. It's not skin, bro. It's skill. <laughs> you see, you have you have the big skin and I have the basic skin. I got this for free. <laughs> Ooh. All right, all right. I managed to keep myself alive for one more wave. There's no recalls, correct? No recalls. Yeah, no recalls. Oh. I mean, that wouldn't be fair. Uh, oof. That was oof. pretty close. Turret damage. Turret damage. Yep. I took a lot of turret damage. <laughs> Sub Chronos. Look at my cock. <laughs> We're just, you know, chilling. Nah, I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone, Kronos. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're the better Let's caster. <laughs> no! Yeah, I was gonna get no, the passive! No! no. no. <laughs> That's a wipeout, folks. I was about that to get the passive on you. Yeah, about to, about Didn't to. Didn't you say you need to host dogs? <laughs> Maybe next one. <laughs> Bro, I was literally waiting to open the fucking host, you idiot. Bro, no, you were, we kept saying, rin, rin, rin. <laughs> Bro, Just I was ringing. talking with you, you know, I'm eating, what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Kronos. Yo, 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 come on, I'm waiting out in the open. I see you, but I'm not gonna catch you. <laughs> I just added another three hours to my five hours of sleep from the last three days. Hey, yo. I, I hate this. You you have better macro than me on this guy. Maybe it's just every guy. You never know. <laughs> just trying. Yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, I'm done with it. Uh Okay. I should not have gone in first. <laughs> this was not a this was not a pretty idea. <laughs> no. Alright, Kronos, I gotta admit it, you're pretty annoying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's this after... new emo? I don't, I don't know why I have this new emo. Wait, which one? I don't know. Again. This one. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> oh, wait, that's my recall. Ah, that was so close. Uh... 
<laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna. You literally fly you around live a bit. on YouTube with this guy playing one v one. What's up, Chronos? What you doing, Chronos? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> no! Oh. No! <laughs> you you died like, like a dog, Hockey? I, I can't still win if I get the tower. <laughs> That's so fun though! Tower and three deaths? All right, that that's acceptable. Decent. You're literally streaming this. Uh, Chronos, you're so lucky. Chronos, you're so what lucky. Chronos, fuck? you're so lucky. Looks like my dick dog. Oh my god. No, no. no. <laughs> I forgot you're on YouTube. <laughs> Is this it? Is this it? <laughs> Let's go! Is this it? I have a chance! I can fly back! Okay, how are you even losing? Oh. I, I got this. I got. Okay, no, I don't got this. GG, so bloody Kronos. You're the better yeah. you song. <laughs> He's the better you song. Oh, maybe I'm the <laughs> better player. Mm, I'm not sure about that one, Chief. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna sit here and accept that, you know. <laughs> you know what? You know what I can tell. Otherwise, you gotta put your money where your mouth is. Oh my gosh! Damn, the dragon uh, is mad. Mm. I got a bigger and better dragon. <laughs> got bigger and better. <laughs> now this could mean two things. <laughs> Do we tour wait, can tournament lobby be a non draft one? Mm mm, no. Oh, but you're gonna get only one ban anyway. Oh, yeah, it's true. Alright, <laughs> next one. Oh. We're doing Gushin? Really? Do Gushin, do Gushin. I wanna see how he's Gushin. We're doing Gushin? Mm hmm. Easy. We're doing Gushin. Oh, wait, shit, already started. Oh, Let's my goodness, quick. Alright, fine. If this is not 20, if this is not 20 MS, I'm losing. <laughs> I don't even play Gushin, bro. I have like two matches with the guy. Well, let's see, let's have fun. <laughs> Watch me lose. <laughs> <laughs> Just, listen, I purely suck at 1v1s. Okay, I've, I never 1v1. <laughs> I just yeah, suck look at that. Once. Again, it's, again, it's the skin. <laughs> oh my god. You have a skin too, you should not talk about this one. <laughs> it's just a basic one. I usually lose in Gushin 1v1s, but let's see, let's have fun again. I mean, not to brag or anything, but I lost my last Gushin 1v1, which was like last year. <laughs> so that's uh... <laughs> <laughs> It's not like Hoki tried all the skins on Gushin. Hello, Kronos. Hello. I missed a minion. Me too. Okay, I'm um, done. Um, it's Hoki. Like... I'm watching the stream on YouTube and I have the confused. Nice one, Kronos. Parallel, mute, uh, mute the stream a little bit. Alright. Alright, Chronos. 
David, mute to the stream a little. No, she exposed our <laughs> streamer. Why are you freezing, man? Not cool, man. Mute, 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 mute. Because I want to ask you something. What the fuck is wrong with you? I am in trouble. I don't you're like gonna, this at all. You're gonna die like a um, mosquito right now. Oh, you're not allowed to recall? Oh. No! <laughs> My fatal ignition did not trigger! <laughs> Oh my god, my lethal ignition just said nope. No, it doesn't. There you go. <laughs> That's fine. I should have done that. You know, you're smart. <laughs> Imagine winning a 1v1 in my third match with Gooch. With third match with Gooch. I <laughs> third match with Gooch. <laughs> and I have like 500 matches on this guy. Listen, this is not my server, so not fair. I think why we have a one hour break between this game. <laughs> Alright, no, <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> Alright, Kronos. What the fuck are you doing, Hockey? <laughs> what do you mean what the fuck doing? are you doing, Hockey? Oh my god. That's the Kronos combo, not me. No, I'm watching on live your wasted ultimate. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, Kronos, but... I'm low on mana, yeah, I know, I can yeah. see it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even use my ult! <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I am hesitating a bit too much. I'm scared. <laughs> oh yeah, you should be, boy. I am scared. You I know that you have no boy. mana, but my MS is not gonna allow me to get out. <laughs> Sheesh. I don't have mana, bro. <laughs> I don't have mana, bro. I tried to, like, <laughs> and I couldn't do anything. <laughs> I wonder if I can end. Uh, please. Please. Yeah, you can, probably. Can I? Yes, I can! <laughs> oh, one hit. It was one hit away. One hit away. Jeez. Nice, if I Kronos. I'm not losing! <laughs> Not on Gushin, at least. <laughs> you got, it was a lucky win, so it wasn't as convincing as the use on. <laughs> I, I mean, still I guess. Got it. I, I, still I mean, got yeah. It. You still got it. Just that you didn't have any mana, and I was like, wait, why are you going in? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had enough to do the. I, I thought I had enough to do the ult, so I was like, oh, it's okay. <laughs> Let's right, go this, one more. This, Let's this, do one. Yeah. Right, what, one. Let, let's see what the chat wants, actually, yeah. Let's see what the chat wants here for them. Let me look, uh, let me look at the chat. Oh, let me go there. 
Do we have anyone in the chat who wants, you know, a specific hero? It's pretty dead right now, I think. No, we got people watching. It's just, I think, uh, what, well, let's see, let's see. We'll find out. Oh, oh, so that's, that's hard, bro. That's hard. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I don't like that one. <laughs> That's more Sorry. better than Cho. <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. I, I am pretty bad, Cho. Wait, hold on. Very bad. Let's wait for second. like. Let's wait for like at least five, five comments. Then we decide. How about that? I, I, unless you want to go Cho Hockey. Oh, he said he'd be right back. Well, folks, you know what to do. You know who the better player is. You know who the better caster is. Just, just pick. Take. Let, let me know you know pick one of my good heroes and then we can get this going we had hockey who's not really convincing with his gushin he's so bad with his use jong i mean we did an assassin we did a fighter maybe we can do a mage all right i'm back what you got i was just saying like we did an assassin we did a fighter let's do a mage all right then mage go, nana, it is. go nana go nana be nana i was thinking selena no. Ooh, we can. We could Selena. Nana, yeah. Nana is nice too. Or you know. No variant. <laughs> no way, bro. That's just annoying. <laughs> Louis versus Louis. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> I I hate playing Louis. I think I'm better off playing Selena. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Yeah, we could do that. Hiding in the bush thing. Be a sniper it is. This is gonna take so long though. Sure? Yes. Yeah, right. sure. Let's so we hide in the sniper. bush. Which bush? Which bush? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Which bush? Hmm, I wonder. All Where of them. Where's Beatrix? Oh, there she is. Can hmm. I shotgun and call it sniper? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have. I don't my... have these skins. I have the skills. I have my favorite <laughs> skin because it's just there. <laughs> they got it for free too. <laughs> oh my god, this guy's probably a BMA. Oh, I play. I used to play Beatrix a lot. I play Marksman a lot. Marksman I... jungle. I like playing Marksman in the jungle. You know. What do you uh... think about Marksman in the jungle? And the thing is, I like it, but it's just slow. Like, it's not as fast as others, right? Maybe unless you're playing Ranger YSS, but apart from that, I I don't really see some point, some marksman in the jungle, except for maybe Popol and Koopa, Kimi. Brody used to be good, but then they removed his uh, stacks on the jungle thing. So he wasn't really as efficient anymore. And Bia, I don't know about Bia. Maybe with a shotgun she could be quick. <laughs> don't don't we have to like get into a bush and then like, just like you know <laughs> see what that would be yeah like yeah exactly i i thought we want to do that one i mean we could do that one yeah okay okay, okay. you you go first okay okay oh oh that's uh it's uh, your turn How? No! <laughs> How does he know? <laughs> I'm just... Okay, now... Nah. <laughs> Almost. Wait, I know, on, right? Origin. He, oh, he used bad. it already. Oh, my bad. Oh, I mean, you can give me an extra hit. For what? Hey... Yeah, give me a shot, give me a shot. Alright, go in there. <laughs> Just gonna take a guess, he's here. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> 
this is so intense. <laughs> are you here, Kronos? Maybe up here. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> oh my god. It's actually pretty intense, this, this game is so <laughs> Oh my god, that was so close. <laughs> Alright, Kronos, I'm gonna just guess that you're pretty much here. This <laughs> is on the other fucking side. <laughs> I was about to say, well... <laughs> A smaller bush? Yeah, go. Oh, let's go yeah. to the. Oh my, oh my god, let me. Okay, come, come. We can do this one. The side lane one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I go in there. Oh, that's pretty unlucky. <laughs> No, I took damage from that thing. <laughs> I still think. Ooh. I missed the bush, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got me, that's the thing. Kronos. Don't do it. Oh. <laughs> I think Peril saw what I did. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's close. What are you playing now? Oh, Beatrix, okay. Oh, my oh god, yeah, she got, got me. There, oh my god. Nice sniper hook. I got the mini. Hey. Ay yo. I I don't think this I've hit gonna... a single shot since we started. This is, this is gonna last forever, no. Bro, no way. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. <laughs> ah, that's... That oh, was no. so close. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, uh, nice, Loki, okay, nice. I'm proud uh, of you. Almost. Oh Ooh. no! Let's go! Alright, 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 alright. Watch this. It's not like Kronos oh. doing the minion. Oh. Wait, hey, wait, did you, wait. Did you, use, did you use your regen? No, I didn't. Ah, that's... That's like... Whoever gets the shot wins. Alright, Kronos. GG, Kronos. Got you. Ah, damn. 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 Oh shit, I did I, <laughs> I didn't mean to, but okay. Oh, Ooh. early. Or too late. No way! <laughs> no way. GG. <laughs> do, do we end it here or go for another one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that was so intense for some reason. It shouldn't be this intense. And if I had done that like three in a row, Victory! that would have been sexy. <laughs> we can now wait for the match. I guess there's not much time left, anyways, for it. Uh, we can do one more. Let's let's do Selena. Come on. Let's oh, Selena then. Oh yeah, I have no oh. mage. Right. 
That's Selena, and then, and then and then we do Franco, or we do Franco and then Selena. Pick one if you have time. Hmm. If we do Selena quickly, then we Selena's. can do Franco. No, I think we do Franco. That's the more fun. <laughs> or, All right, or, then Frank. Uh, you want to Franco, Selena? You pick. Uh, I don't mind. Yeah, let's go to Fat Man. Franco, it is. Fat Man, it is. Where is he? There he is. By the way, Franco's my main. For real? Yeah. <laughs> Bro. That's just I have like fair. 800 matches on that guy. Jesus. <laughs> so I'll see a lot of skins, huh? Oh. Let's see. Oh. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Same one. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is, I haven't played Franco all season, except for like twice. I actually stopped playing Franco for a while, so I might be pretty, pretty bad with them hooks. Let's do this. Let's do this. Where are you, Chronos? Are you here, Chronos? No. Sheesh! All right, Chronos. I see you. I see you. Oh, oh, is that I, a girl? I tried. <laughs> Close. Damn. Just gotta get the minions out of the way before I get shit like this. Like what? <laughs> like what, bro? Like what? Sheesh! Like that? I thought. I thought you were gonna miss if I was like standing still. <laughs> but no. <laughs> no, Franco has a passive. I know. <laughs> I can wait it out. <laughs> I can just keep like hooking the minions. You can. Unless you want to block it, of course, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I hate <laughs> this. I absolutely hate this. <laughs> You've had 800 <laughs> matches with this guy, come on. I haven't played this guy in seasons, okay? I sp like, 500 in the of those matches were in like, a single season. And then, you know, I kept like playing him every now and then. It's like you're saying I play him every day. Uh, no, not really. Cheers, girls. If I want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want. Okay, mm -hmm. no, I hate this game. <laughs> Hawk is talking. <laughs> I hate this game. Alright, Kronos, that's it. I have to finish you off, buddy. That's what she said. <laughs> Come here, Kronos. Man, why are you so damn far? <laughs> this is literally- this is legit a tower game. <laughs> oh, it's bullying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. Okay, you know what, let's make it more fun. We stay only in the river. How about okay, that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can we, like, hook flicker out the river? Alright, Kronos. Alright. Hey, hello, hello there. Hello. Oh, let's go. There it is. There it is. <laughs> nah. I got distracted, but anyways, that's fun. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Jeez. <laughs> All right, let's take a break, I guess, and then come back. Oh, you want to do yep. Selena? Mm, how, oh. how many minutes left?
All right, then yeah. I guess we can uh, we can just take a break from here then. Let's do it. That was fun. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I'll be casting for this one though. So <laughs> have fun, Hockey. Yep. I did more damage to you that like I did six k damage. Oh, you, you kept like that? seconds killing me. All I was focusing on <laughs> is just to get you close enough to hook you under my tower. <laughs> I did it once, but unfortunately, no ult at that time. Yeah, I did have flicker and I managed to survive, thankfully. <laughs> well, that was GG's. Um, we are going to wait here for a while. We have an upcoming match of um, Iconic versus the new team, the one and only. Their name is Mirage, and I'm pretty excited to see the match. I'll be watching this one. Unfortunately, I won't be casting. So, we will see you during the match.
scanning. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Crown League. This is Kronos for match week seven, day three. And for the final game for tonight, we have Mirage versus Iconic Crew. But let's before that, let's get to our other caster. It is Ryan Rumbles, ladies and gentlemen. Put it together for him. Hey, hello there, everybody. I'm virtually waving to everyone. Um, nice to be here, joining you, man, over here. Uh, it's halfway into the season. I mean, over halfway already. And we had a very big change as well. Uh, maybe you want to cover that because we have a new team, new team stepping in, actually. Yeah, we have a new team stepping in. That's Mirage. That's on the blue side today. That's going against Iconic Please. Crew. I'm not sure that's a great first game for them. So we don't really have any stats or any idea about who Mirage are, Ryan. But we do know something about Iconic Crew, though. Yeah, Iconic Crew. You know, they're they're a steady mid table side right now. Um, just with a with two two O victories, they could be already challenging for the fourth spot right now. Unfortunately for them, top esports just won their series tonight, so they are still solidifying that top four spot for themselves. But Iconic Crew, they they're kind of lagging behind, but they're doing a very good job. I think like that their team play is very good uh, on a on a decent level. Their drafts have been showing like um, great uh, great tactics as well so far, and I'm I'm very excited to see what's going to happen here because as as you said, you know we don't really know anything about Mirage. We know a couple of the figures here, like Shino, who's uh, a quite popular YouTuber. That is also a quite quite a big uh, French squad. But I don't think we have seen them really in past tournaments here in Europe. Yeah, and you know what? Well, speaking of Shino, I was about to say, I want to see a Cho come out of the cards tonight. You want to see that little bit of a flicker Jeet Kune Do play coming in, especially what he's known for. So you never know. If I was Iconic Crew, I would have the information that I might want to ban Cho. But given the fact that Cho's not the greatest in the meta right now, you know, they, I, they might be just having fun with it. But I think first game is probably testing the waters to see where they stand and how good they are, what the comfort picks are. Because right now, it's like you said, Ryan, we're already mid-season, and you know that our certain teams have certain strategies when they go into the draft, like like top esports. I was just telling Hockey the previous series that they like taking out this AOE CC with this Minotaur, this Guinevere, this Tigreals. They do not like facing, against the, facing that or going against that. So now realizing that Iconic Crew are midway into the season, they do not like going against pickoff. Like, and right now they're banning out the Nolan, you got taken out the Matilda. So I think Mirage have the upper hand. Yeah, pretty, yeah, it's, it's easy to say. It's interesting as well because Danzi is a pretty good Nolan player himself, but they just don't want to risk it in these first picks uh, to give it away to Mirage's side. Exana always a, a decent uh, ban here currently in that meta. Very well pairs with Ruby and uh, a lot of other meta fighters currently because of the CC he provides and the joy is going to be the first pick i don't know I, I never really trust the joy first pick because it doesn't offer you a whole lot without without the roam without the xp laner and just on the jungle itself it feels a little bit squishy a little bit uh, a little bit vulnerable yeah but on the other side you know it's a flexible pick though you can always put it in the oh, yeah, absolutely. lane you can put it in the mid lane put vengeance on it and just create havoc in the band back line dancing to the rhythm the whole time so you never know what's going to happen but on the side of iconic crew i mean i want to see a novaria possibly pull out uh, i don't know minotaur too early yeah. you think i mean it's a great take i think taking minotaur away from mirage is kind of the kind of the giveaway here because you know joy pairs well with some something close range which you can keep up in the fight so Minotaur CC uh, taken away from that is already good carry as well. Uh, probably the top three marksman right now. Claude banned from Mirage's side, so that has to be answered with Bruno probably. And it's already hurting Mirage's chances here. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good thing you pointed out right there. I think this is the time where they have to pick up their marksman. They're actually forced to doing that because now Bruno is the only viable option that's in the meta that they can pick up. But on the other side, if they wait for it to be too late, then, you know, it's the second phase of the band. You just take it out. But on the other side, you have this carry that's a really brilliant marksman that can be tanky. It's a tank shredder. And at the same time, you can go all damage with the attack speed as well. But on the other side, we see this Ruby coming out, which you said is a good hero that you can chain CC along with. So exposing their EXP and their Vomer right at the start, not going for the marksman route, Ryan. You might, yeah. you think this might cost them? 
It actually, it actually might, but I think it's a great uh, job from Mirage's side to take CC away from uh, from Iconic Crew as well. We've seen a lot of CC victories from uh, King Cory doing a very good job on it. Export to counter it as well, just to point, just to give out that uh, true true damage onto Ruby and CC. Uh, looking pretty good. So they're taking away some extra mid options there as well in the face of that Novaria. Yeah, I think I, I don't think they're gonna ban any more gold laners. Actually, they're just letting Mirage to play it out freely and just get that uh, get that choice themselves. Bruno, uh, who else could be here? Uh, Ixia, maybe, but you know you want to have someone tanky, uh, very beefy at the top, and someone also to uh, guard against flanks if you're playing Ixia. Yeah, so maybe now they'll be looking at someone that's a little more mobile when it comes to being a marksman. And on speaking of that, they take out this Nathan. Not the most mobile marksman, but you do have the entropy to actually teleport back and forth. So taking that option away from the side of Team Mirage. And let's not forget, once again, folks, you know, Team Mirage, new team in the league, first game in match seven, match week seven. So it's going to be... Just testing the water so far, so Iconic Crew really are trying to check or tick all their boxes, dot their I's, cross their T's, and here we have the Valentina. Yeah, provides quite a lot for the team as well. It's probably going to limit the uh, marksman and mid options even further. The Gore is going to be interesting. Usually you see Gore something into like an Xana, but into Valentina, maybe just because of the out range. I'm not sure how they're really going to lock it in though, but... Um, it, it could help out, but it just seems like they don't have really any dive, any commitment into like these team fights. You don't really have that starter, that generator, and that might be the problem for Mirage here. Yeah, you want the initiation coming in, but Danzi going for the Hanzo. We've seen this before, quite dominating when he gets going, but at the same time can be countered by this joy if he gets the right timing with those electrifying beats and the rhythm just to go in. Well, the draft is set, the stage is set, Ryan. What do you think so far? Looking at the picks, wh which team do you favor? I think it's equal on the board. I think Hanzo does provide that uh, wild card right now into uh, into IC's pocket. And I think Hanzo can do a very good job here. Uh, they don't really, you know, Mirage don't have anything to really invade with either to really slow down that Hanzo early game. So I think most of like early neutral objectives should go in the favor of uh, IC right now. Yeah, it will be early. That is the name of the game. You want to get the early advantage. If Hanzo is able to get the buffs, you know he's going to be a really good fast in the jungle. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends of all ages, we are here in the land of Dawn. Team Mirage on the blue side. Team Iconic Crew on the red. Match week 7, day 3, Crown League, Kronos alongside Ryan Rumble. First game for Mirage and also first game for Ryan Rumble. Yep, thank you very much, man. I feel <laughs> I feel like I'm playing the game myself with an intro like that. Uh, I think so far, you take a look, like you mentioned, Ryan, you have this Hanzo that can be a big problem, not only with the fast jungle clear, but also realizing that Gord and Clint are immobile heroes. So yeah. having someone like an Hanzo who's basically no cooldown on the ultimate is going to be a really big problem. Yeah, you can see it already. Like you can see the full control over the river area, and Danzi is gonna get just just eat up that lethal wender. And meanwhile, the joy is just rotating to her blue buff. So you know it's gonna take a long time for her to catch up. And it, you know it, these early five, ten second delays they really play in the favor of one team getting that turtle early. Yeah, that early turtle is quite important, especially when you have the Valentina as well on the side of Iconic Crew. We'll be able to use the IMU to take away important ultimates when it comes to I'm Offended, Mystic Gush. You have the curtain call, so you don't know the what's going to happen. The lane full dive coming up, though. Look at that, though. <laughs> so, you know, maybe, maybe be in trouble. They're just trying to funnel the Hanzo, but no, they're going to be striking away from it. They're just trying to weaken up every bit of jungle camp there is for that Hanzo to just gobble up so right now it just does look like that Hanzo is being spoon fed and they don't really want to commit too much onto the lane so far Meanwhile, the goal lane, though, you have a three-man gang coming Ooh. in. There it is, the damage. The flicker, not enough to get out of there. Let's try and beat so with the rhythm. Will there be that? It's first blood. However, carry will fall in the hands of Insomnia, not letting him sleep tonight. 
But right now, Hanzo going in for the Ninjutsu, not enough damage, will go back. And now the turtle has spawned 2 minutes, 7 seconds into the game. First blood, that was really good. Yeah, it was really good. And you can see that that early game damage is still pretty good on Joy as well. As you can see, just then that's done and the marksman is free food for you. Hanzo die was good, but he was melted immediately in the spirit form. So there was nothing really to contest with. Right now, the turtle is still a question mark, actually. Um, Ooh, Mirage trying to contest 4 h Chino, yeah, really deep in there, and it's still early game. They can't survive it. Really? There's the last insanity coming out. It should kill Shino. That's right. There's going to be the second kill coming up as well. No! Tram no. somehow gets away. What the fuck? The Gord with the ultimate. Not good enough, though. Saki is still alive. He's eating up the most of the damage, and the turtle should be going in the favor of Iconic Crew at the moment. Look at Danzi, though. Look at Danzi. He actually went in, just ate the red buff while doing the turtle. That is the utility that this Hanzo provides. The demon feast yeah. is able to take it off the table. Yeah, you're just multitasking. You know, you have two, uh, two bodies, so put that into good use, you know. Yeah, at the moment you have the spare. There you go. Kinjutsu coming out once again from right, Danji that's a trying to get very that ballsy tower dive. Going into the turret, getting the B, getting BXK so low right now, and actually not giving the priority when it comes to this mid lane rotation. As you can see, top side is being prioritized by both teams. Yeah, I was thinking that maybe they're trying to do it, so they're forcing that core to just uh, recall as well, just go back so they can push in the mid wave to go into that full go lane commitment, but they are uh, hesitating a little bit right now here, you can see they're going in a little bit too late, I think Insomnia gets away, has to waste a flicker for it though, but there's no worries really, Tram is there to protect him as well, so in the end it's gonna stay as a 2-2, XP lane fight is really heating up. But the x -Borg not doing too much damage to Shino at the moment. Yeah, that flicker up top coming up, uh, you know, baiting it out of Insomnia is quite good there. Oh Once again, Kinjutsu with a Devastator baiting another flicker, but 2 for nothing. Hanzo's ultimate is just about 15, 16 seconds in the early game even. But meanwhile, on the top side, you can see Nikki here being taken out. Speedy Lightwheel's coming out, taken out low. There's a support from Saki as well, giving a little bit of heal. Seems like both the roamers will be prioritizing helping their goal laner. He's going again. Dance is going in again. It's it's before fifth minute, and how many tower dives have we seen? This has to be like the fourth or fifth one already, and it's gonna fail yet again. But they're just just terrorizing them mentally here. BXK just barely gets to lane. Finally, is recalling as well. Meanwhile, the Hanzo can continue on farming in peace and from the safety of his uh, tier one towers as well. I mean, he baited out two flickers and one ultimate right now from the in that Mystic Gush. So, all in the span of like about a minute and a half. So yeah, that is baby. something so. Ooh, that's a nice pull. Oh, Hold on a second. But Bloods gets away. There's no worries there. Saki with a nice punch as well. Just to slow down that attack. But there's the joy just oh, sprinting oh, through, going oh, out, beating an Olympic record in the process. And even the Hanzo can't catch her. Maybe, just maybe the last insanity will though. And there it is, King Cory. He's relentless with the ultimate, and that's going to be the third kill here for yeah, Iconic Crew. Iconic Crew living up to the name. Iconic indeed going in with Fortnite kill. Actually, Blood's able to survive with the slightest bit of HP. Like you said, Joy was sprinting out of there, but was not able to get out of harm's way. And the turtle goes towards the side of Iconic Crew, who focused their attention in the top lane, realizing that Nikki is in trouble. Mystic Gush coming out onto Saki right there. Spitty light wheels with spinning light wheels. <laughs> trying to do as much as they can, but they will have to back off. As in the mid lane, he just gets the tower for free. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's I guess that's kind of expected right now. Danzi has been doing it forever Ooh. and ever, and Furky kind of got really pent up about that. <laughs> Wanted vengeance and actually found that kill, so that's really nice. Finally, Danzi is being shut down. They can maybe push in that midway. Well, really, they can't because the Minotaur is still there. The Valentina is in position and they have to play from side lanes, but they're not getting ahead. That's the problem. Insomnia is farming safely, relying on his passive, and he can't really do much because the team is too much blood, focused on defending blood, mid lane. Blood, lane. Ooh, blood, oh. is still alive? Oh, 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 
but no one could be coming out. He was so close. That's there. insane. That Another so punch. <laughs> that was so close. The knockup being able to save him right on time, along with the heal from Saki. Bloods once again with the skin of his teeth, able to survive. That is two times in a row, and that might not mean much, but that is mentally such a problem for the side of Team Mirage, who's in their first game right now. Insomnia trying to get the top lane tier one turret. And right there, Furky is getting out of harm's way. Yeah. And, and the one thing working in the favor of Mirage is that Clint range right now, the passive range, they can poke the lanes real easily right now. Got that towers thanks to that as well. They're trying to collapse onto SRAM. Not working too well though. Dan's getting uh, chipped off really heavily here, so has to call back his body again. But uh, it's fine, you know, just uh, just doing that little bit of poke, and it's working out. They're gonna get that um, turtle prio yet again. Yeah, turtle priority yet again, and that is the name of the game. They've been controlling the river so far, and it, it, it's so deep. They have SRAM that's taking out so low quarter HP. That's their roamer. Oh, Cory, Kiraga has been dropped. Furky trying to chase him down, though. Will he get there? Yes, Cory is dead. Meet. Wait, no, Furky doesn't no, go under the tower. Oh, lord. And the Furk is the one actually in trouble now because Saki and Bloods come looking for him. And the turtle still though, uh, in the meanwhile, goes into the hands of Iconic Crew. Just another one in the list. Oh, and uh, Trino, well, what is he trying to do? He's trying to rely on the passive just to get away with the speed, but it's not really working out, is it though? Three players yeah. against you, and that performance delight is not going to get you out fast enough. Yeah, the Wombo combo was there. They went to the Minoan Fury last insanity. Stram here might go down as well. But you know, on the mid lane, there was a pickoff coming in. Danzi gets BXK finally. There's so many After fights going on. Invades. And the meanwhile, in the blue buff, there was another one. But they get Nikki this time. One for yeah, one what trade. What and they're still they even doing there? Just I'm wanna... offended. Coming in from both Bloods and Stram. But Stram will fall. It's just fights left, right, and center. Look your, look up once again. The Ryan Wait, Danzi in some days dead meat isn't he he's just a worm on the hook but there's no one to latch on to the fight and there's only help here for danzi coming up with his main body following up and he's just <laughs> finishing it up with basic attacks was it i mean that's crazy that's just insult to injury at that point yeah. isn't it hanzo's main body with basic attacks onto your marksman like, that's something you don't want to see that you don't get to see every day but right now, you can tell that the side of Team Iconic Crew have the pressure on the map, have the priority in the river, and now they're just pushing down on everything. Once again, Kinjutsu coming out. He's trying to focus on BXK. Danzi is. Demon Thorn. The damage is there, but I'm offended. Helps to get down, but it will not be enough. He will fall. Minoan Fury coming out. Double kill going on towards Nikki right there. But I think they did get a kill in return in the EXP laner in King Cory. Yeah, it's crazy, like, ha have you ever seen, like, that Hanzo in the melee distance, like, that Hanakage has been only <laughs> striking from, like, five miles away, and this is how you play that Hanzo, you have to be really far, you can't commit to your, to your fights head to head, so you just have to be miles and miles away, you're gonna poke out your enemies, and he does it so well, because, you know, the, the Gord, uh, the CC as well, up to this point, has been really squishy, uh, also the Clint, the CC is building tank right now, you know, you got that uh, little breastplate, but it's not really helping its cause. I mean, because at this point, it just goes to show that how dominating Iconic Crew are. Once again, he's going in, Ryan. Take a yeah, look. Yeah, this time Shino heals up a little bit and that Brutor breastplate does help a lot out a little bit, but yeah, just... <laughs> Genzi does keep repeating the same script. Oh my god, the burst damage Ooh. coming out though. Wait, Saki's been deleted. Furky traded out as well, so it's a 4 on 4 continuing on, but the Lord is marching down mid. And the bottom lane is crashing in. They're forced to defend that one as well. Nikki trying to provide some extra pressure, just zoning them away from that area, hoping Danzi, to get Danzi. that tower down. Wait, the mid lane tower is gone. Danzi just pushes in that extra bit of attack damage, and that's it. You're basically down to inhibitors now. Oh, there's Sram almost getting him right there, but able to flicker out. Mystic Gush was used as well. Right now, once again, Dan's going in with that Kinjutsu. He is on the hunt. Devastator coming out. Insomnia oh, not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> that was so much damage. He's just so annoying. Furky going to the back line. He gets Hanzo. He gets Danzi dancing his way out of there. Seems like he wants to be in the marathon this time, but I don't know if he'll be able to save his life. 
I mean, yeah, Ferk is the only one who can reach that Hanzo, so realistically he has to make that reach for it, but it's so hard to get out as well, but that's... Oh, that wind boost oh. as well from the jungle eats up a couple of tower shots, but as good as ever gets to run away. Nick is here, though. Pacino supporting. And just look at how fast that Joy is. Here's the Minor 2, though, blocking the way of the Labyrinth, and Ferk is going down. Oof, that was so close for comfort for the side of Team Iconic Crew. Nikki was almost about to fall there, maybe in the wrong position, but saved by Saki and blocking Furky as well. These names are these names are quite funny to say all the time, but right now, I think if you see how Iconic Crew are playing, they have the pressure. They should keep it up uh, there. I'm offended coming in from SRAM. Mystic Gush just melting down that Minotaur. Is he supposed to be a tank? Oh my god, that was a lot of damage. Yeah, it's funny because uh, he's built a support item as well, the healing support item, uh, just other than the main magic defense as well. So he's still he's still absorbing a lot of damage, right? Even if he has like one and a half tank items. So Minotaur is really tough to deal with, as you can see, the natural heal as well. And uh, a little bit of a chase here. Shino though put, pops the vengeance as well, hoping that maybe it catches the. Uh, the uh, Danzi and forces him to get away fast with the Hanakage, but no, he goes down anyways. It doesn't really matter at this point. The CC is 0 4. I haven't seen the gore being useful in any fight so far. It can't really be a draft if maybe, maybe some other picks like uh, Lunox uh, would have been better, I think, on mid lane, but hey. Once He's again, in going in, Danzi, I think he was trying to get someone just using the Kinja to clear the wave. But Furke here trying to be a menace, uh, providing a little bit of vision only because he can get out of there quite fast and quite but easily. That's another lord, isn't it? I mean, they haven't taken yeah. any objectives so far. They haven't done any turtles, any lords, and the river is just so far out of their reach. They had a consolation prize with that one turret up top, but there again, Kinjutsu going in, but the damage oh, is there Lord. from Insomnia, Devastator onto towards Shino, Demon Thorn coming out as well, but just getting out of there, just wanted to bait out the flickers at this point. Rocky, what is he trying to get? Is he maybe gonna surprise Nikki here? No. Too many people here. He's, he's opting to bail out of that fight early, and I think that's the right call as well, because they're really falling onto that last line of defense. They're forced to turtle up at the back of their inhibitors, and only that bot lane has a tier 2 tower left, so it is, uh, the game is reaching its end and Mirage looking to get that shorter end of the stick here. I mean, if you take a look at the items right now, but never mind, the Mystic Gush comes oh, out on the stock, he's taking quite Deleted. low build. All the, the, I'm offended from IMU coming out, Last Insanity being used as well, just to zone the enemies away, but at this point, will they be able to get that turret? Curtain Call coming in, Vengeance being used as well, will they have enough damage? A performance Delight was able to pick it up, but right now Bloods Ooh. will be thanks to CC and the Electrifying Beats, but the Lord is marching down, Danzi is able to go for the base straight up, but at the moment they will be able to defend, they did get the top inhibitor, bottom inhibitor is just about to fall. And yeah, I, I mean, see the thing with Mirage comp is that they do have a lot of good wave clear, right? Gord is one of the best base defenders there is in the game because of his uh, because of his uh, deletion abilities. Basically, his ult can deal with so many minions at once as well, and his passive. So they're they're just going to be playing tower defense, I think. For and it, this could go on for like a good ten or fifteen minutes longer. Yeah, the way if they don't apply any pressure, it will. But the stun coming on towards Danzi, Furky taking so low. Oh, that was a lot of. Wait, but there's nowhere to go. Nick is coming. Oh, no, I'm he's not taking over the tower. He's so. Oh. oh no! I just wanted to say he's so lucky that that siege minion was there, but no, did not get through it. The Nicky's light wheels caught up with him, and Danzi's assault is just relentless, poking them back forcing them to respect that Hanzo once again. I, I think they're just, they're just hanging on by a skin of their teeth, just by a hair, because right now they're going in for the uh, bottom inhibitor, and now once again Hanzo's proving to be a problem. I think if they get their timings right, if all's well, they'll be able to get Hanzo when his ultimate expires back into their base, but I don't think it's it's a risky business to they're gonna wait for the lord play it safe and make sure they go but no danzi going once again applying the pressure devastator coming out and then going back again just trying to bait out some of these important spells these flickers these vengeances i think they have to compete for this 
Lord that's coming up. Minoa and Fury being used by Saki there. Misty Gush by Gord. It should be an easy Lord coming in from Iconic Crew. Yeah, definitely. Saki just uh, scouting the area here. It should be melted pretty easily. You know, that carry had a very tough early game, but she's catching up right now as well. Uh, already has uh, yeah has a full build. Build actually has a defensive item as well. But there's the CC still chipping in here, actually. And they're forced to retreat, even Ooh. though the board has... Uh, I'm sorry, the export has everything last in Sunny, the full shield up, but the Firaga armor is being popped. Immortality not yet. And this but was a great base, though. Fight, and the Lord was taken, actually, by Mirage here. They have another breathing chat room to breathe right now. I think it was miscommunication coming in from the side of Team Iconic Crew. They're known to throw such late games, but at the moment they did. Bloods went down a little too early, and Look that gave the, the opening. Ooh. It's just too much for them to deal with. They have to take it nice and slow, but will they have enough time? Will they have the space to move up the river? Yeah, Again, that's you see, they Nancy can't really going. push it up, right? Like, you have that mid midway crashing in very soon as well. BXK is in a lot of trouble right now with Furki, and everyone basically being involved in Somni as well. They get his uh, Hanakage down, but it takes a long while. Oh, I mean, as far as the Lord can go, I think it's like midway into the lane, not really further away. Tram so trying to apply pressure. I don't think they can initiate a fight here, though. He's Minoan trying Fury. though, Strand is being crawled, Saki with nice knockups here, there's more airtime than a Boeing 727 oh. here on Strand, but that's a great kill from Insomnia from range. Sniping down Danzi, who's that key piece of poke and damage and versatility right now in that squad of IC. And that's a tower taken, are we really seeing a complete reverse sweep right now here? Porky though! But no, the Lord is being deleted, and that means they have to fall back again. Last Insanity popped a little bit too early, uh, just as a means to clear out that way fast. And making that tier 3 tower survive, but... I Suddenly, think if I... Yeah, yeah it, there's a chance, there's an opening. I think if I was on the side of Team Mirage, I would take this. They've got two turrets. What the inhibitor almost going down. They're almost about to get King Corey. They're, fighting, right they're now. fighting without Danzi. That's very courageous from them. But Saki's going down, and I think that's a little bit egotistic from them. Corey as well only has immortality. Doesn't have Hiraga armor. Insomnia might go down here. Maybe gets the knockup. No, he won't. And he's gonna be stunned out a little bit as well from that fight. Another tower goes, and suddenly iconic crew are forced down to their hind feet. They have to fight from the back. They are stuck on their third of that map and it's not really looking comfortable now is it well iconic crew actually throwing the ball away at the moment and i think team mirage just made sure they have the opportunity of a comeback living to see another lord the king core applying the pressure onto her shino here and danzi will have to be careful because he they know that he is the poke he is the damage that's there he is the one that's going to separate the front line and the back line of the side of team mirage but right now team mirage in full control i think it's the first time in this 20 minute game they have the full control of the river and the lord area yeah absolutely danzi got his immortality some magic defense onto nikki as well but that doesn't really matter against Gord uh, because of his true damage anyways so we'll see how that lord fight goes though saki's kind of forcing his way in i think that's way too optimistic right now blood's just dashing around three dashes over here gets that joy ultimate as well they get that kill thanks to it insomnia goes down shino is being forced away tansy's being that first line of defense but only thanks to his ghost here and they're gonna get that lord no matter what is going back into the pocket of iconic crew yeah that that was an opening that they needed and saki made the big red big brave play actually going in quite deep and once again SRAM uh, trying to get something using the I'm offended to pull two of them towards the side but not enough because there is no source of damage Danzi in coming from the plant though so he gets a knock up here BXK is done Ooh. for that is too much for them to deal with now they do not have the wave clear this is a luminous lord that's marching down top lane but they it's will they need it even the base Corey is gonna go tough yeah, they can just tank it, they can just tank it, they can just go for it. Danzi going for the flank as well, they're gonna go in for that overkill over here. Danzi is tanking it, they are ending, look at Bloods, he's just auto-attacking it. And it's over and done with, first game goes for Iconic Crew. It was kind of rocks and hills in the late game, but they finally do it.
they finally did it indeed uh, iconic crew once again getting to the late game and almost throwing the game but able to pull it back thanks to that big courageous play coming in saki finding them the opening that they needed to get the lord and then it was just downfall there for team mirage but i think this is some some bright new some good colors that we're seeing coming out from the side of team mirage it's it goes to show that they are not just pushovers they can make their way back from a deficit even yeah absolutely and i think some of these surprise picks as well just like that hanzo uh, did pull pull a rug off from Mirage, so they they did have a good comp going on. I feel like, but yeah, uh, Danzi spoke was too much to deal with. Uh, Saki was on point with a lot of these initiations, a lot of these saves, like we saw early on as well, protecting Bloods, for example. And uh, Iconic Row, I think they gave like a hundred and ten percent here, which means that they were pushed to the maximum. So uh, yeah, I'm very happy that Mirage was included, and we probably wouldn't have seen such an equal game uh, with Kingsman. Agreed, agreed, and uh, rightly so. But let's take a two-minute break, folks, before we come back for game number two in this best of three series between uh, Team Mirage and Iconic Crew. Until then, we'll take a short break and be right back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back for the second game in a ga in this best of three series between Team Mirage and Team Iconic Crew. Iconic Crew actually taking the first victory, but Team Mirage were no pushover. This is your caster Kronos alongside Ryan Rumbles, who will be joining us in a second. But at the moment, Team Iconic Crew on the blue side and Team Mirage on the red. So you know that Team, uh, Team Mirage will be aware of that Hanzo and will want to take it away this time if I was them. I don't want to give them that free reign for all that poke and that aggressive aggression coming in from the side of a Team Iconic Crew. But taking out the Joy and the Ruby, the Ruby was a problem for the side of Team Iconic Crew. So rightly so, taking it off is a really great meta fighter and can also be flexed into the roam position right now. And on the other side, Joy being taken off the table, once again, a flexible pick and that, that can be played in the EX plane, in the mid lane, and in the jungle. But as of now, the way the game's been progressing, I think Team Iconic Crew are doing great, but on the other hand, Team Mirage don't seem to be a pushover, like other teams that we know in this league. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh... But, well, yeah, what I'm thinking as well, like, it was actually a really good treat that first game. Like, it was really equal as well uh, in terms of gameplay, in terms of score, in terms of kills. Uh, it didn't take a long time, but it was, I think it was really good. And Mirage, of course, they have that need to prove themselves, especially with that points incentive uh, being brought up right now. So if they beat someone in top four, they're going to get two extra points uh, in the victories. So... I think they really want to climb up that ladder, even though there's just uh, a few games left in the regular season. Yeah, that is a lot of incentive for them to win this series indeed. But right now, looking at the draft, we have Vexana being taken off the table and there is Arlot as well. I'm not a big fan of the Arlot. I understand he can do a lot of damage, has a lot of CC, really good in team fights. But Arlot in the EX lane, I like are a lot in the wrong position i don't like but you know what ryan speaking of likes and don't like who's your favorite hero favorite hero man so i've been uh valor main uh, for quite a few years right now uh when ixia came out i switched to ixia i started to learn matchman so yeah ixia right now is like my top one wait we're gonna see the roger that's been a hot talk today as well uh, that kind of helped out top esports. We also saw it in MPL today, but it's not yes, going to be did. quite that one yet. We're going to see Novaria run. Yes, speaking about what we saw Roger in the MPL, this has been a trend that's been going around MPL Philippines and MPL Indonesia, where they are not relying on the marksmen anymore in the goal lane, only because they are too squishy for yeah. this current meta with the damage that's being dished out. 
So you want to put your marksman's either into the jungle or maybe a fighter that has enough damage in the early game and can scale enough into the mid game for them to have an impact. So I'm not sure if the other team right now will want to go for that team Mirage. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, Roger does build kind of like Clint, or if you want to go for it, like Aldous, you know, you got that endless battle, you got uh, Thunderbolt, of course, you, you're building kind of tanky, and you have a lot of invulnerability anyways if you're jumping into heroes, so... Uh, I, I, I kind of understand his worth, definitely, uh, but late game he's still gonna play as an assassin trying to pick people off, so... Maybe you will lose that kind of uh, sustained damage like some uh, marksman ultimates provide. And we see that Claude being picked up, um, no carry yet, maybe the carry is going to be the response, I don't think carry pairs too well with Novaria though, and the Hanzo again! I was going to say, they got to take this Hanzo off the table, but Team Mirage uh, falling right into the trap of Team Iconic Crew, not taking it off the board, and once again, Danzi will be that annoying pressure and annoying Hanzo that he is towards this Novaria, but... On the bright side, Novaria is a much more mobile mage compared to a Gord. Yeah, definitely, and provides so much more in team fights as well. I think be just because of the hitbox expansion, uh, the vision you provide, there's just so much you and all the flanking as well. The flanking is probably going to be to target uh, that Claude, especially Paquito. Great XP lane pick here is going to be forcing IC to go over their XP lane picks a little bit because there's just a few ones that beat Paquito consistently right now, like Xborg or CC, which they are good at, but I don't know, the Xborg doesn't really work right now here with it. They're still going for that poke right now. And Xborg is banned as well, I didn't even notice. And they've picked up the CC. So they have a CC, they have this Paquito. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't really have counters. Just... One of them is yeah. Benedetta, but Benedetta again, you know, you, you, you're going to have that mindset. You're going to have that skills to play her. And I don't think I've seen IC play Benedetta this season. Uh, I think, like, they're, they're going for the strategy where they don't want to play a marksman. They're going to put their eggs in one basket with this Novaria. That's going to be a nuisance with all that damage from afar sniping them. And they might want to go for a marksman jungle, I feel like, maybe. But in the hands of a Hanzo, I'm not sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, yep. Yuzhong Band, uh, also decent uh, sustained pick into Paquito. Uh, something that has great dive as well. Can reach the back line, can pierce through to get that Novaria down. Carry banned. So yeah, that leaves very little marksman options here for Mirage. Could it be uh, Clint again? I don't think they're going for a marksman, Ryan. Looks like they want to go for a double you fighter. So? You think they're going yeah, for that? Okay, yeah. We have a CC, we have a Paquito. I think, what, is Sram going to play Paquito in the wrong position? Yeah, How long no, 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 I felt like at the start, especially when the Mathilda came out, that Novera is going to be Rome, and that Paquito maybe is going to be flexed to jungle, but into, into <sighs> Hanzo, oh, that really doesn't make sense, but I guess it will be, it will be. I mean, I, I like this Brody pick, only because you have the Corrosive Strike to get that CC on towards Hanzo when he's coming in with that Kinjutsu, trying to do a little bit of damage, you know, so you can get that CC just to create that separation. So that's something that they've thought of. That's a good plan coming in from Team Mirage. But on the other side, they're going to have this kill box from Bloods in this real world manipulation. I don't know. I feel like Team Iconic Crew are cooking something. Yeah. Um, very, very good pickups as well. Glue can survive almost everything by Paquito, can outlast these fights as well. Really good in these team fights. And still that mid lane pick being hovered and hovered and hovered. Nana, I would say, actually is the best oh. one because you don't have Vexana, you have already banned her anyways, and Vexana alternative in pro play is Nana 100%, so that is probably the best option here. Yeah, I'm not sure what their jungle option is going to be, or maybe they're going to flex this Paquito into the jungle. Are they going to go for be, the yeah. Johnson? No, no, that's <laughs> insane. Yeah, oh, Tiger. Hey, you never know. Johnson in the jungle, Paquito in the room, it could have worked out. <laughs> that just has a ring to it, to be honest. Yeah, It, it could have worked out, but there we are. The draft is set. The stage is set. We have two purifiers coming in from the side of the team. Iconic crew and a bunch of flickers. Maybe the sprint coming in from Novaria still thinking of what they want to pick. But right now, Paquito in the jungle, I think that's a good aggressive jungle pick. That's good in the early game just to provide a little bit of competition to this Hanzo. Absolutely, yeah. I think they're going to be looking for a little bit of harass here as well, especially with the Tigril. Uh, you have Navari as well. He can snipe from distance. That Hanzo will be under a lot more pressure compared to that 
first game. Yeah, because in the first game you had a mobile mage, you had in uh, Gord, you had a mobile marksman with this Clint. But on the second game, we have uh, much more mobility coming in from the side of Team Mirage, a little bit of CC as well. But right now, it could be all Shiro if uh, the side of Team Iconic Crew take this game in this best of three series. They're one nil up, and will Team Mirage have something to say in the second game? for their standing in the crown league week seven right now chronos alongside ryan ryan take it away yeah so we already see that hanzo just farming away bloods uh well okay just a little bit of a friendly recall spam coming out here a good job here from king cory as well trying to push that tigreal away as far as possible you don't want that thing anywhere near your buffs so that's a good job to start with. Saki, though, really deep in there as a Mathilda as well, who is extremely squishy early game. That's a very brave Ooh. decision, already losing half of her HP, but that's fine right now. They're still oh, waiting for dance, minion. Look at dance, look at dance, look at dance. Oh, just get the, it oh. in the bush at the right time. There's this Furky until almost able to get that dance yeah. was guiding Wind <laughs> to get out of there. That was so close. Yeah, it was a gamble. He lost a little bit of time off his own uh, off his own clear right now, off his own full clear, especially. So uh, that still will be iconic's crew, iconic crew's um, Lethal Wanderer apparently, because they're trying to pressure that Hanzo even more. The Tiger Will is hell bent on chasing that <laughs> Hanzo down like a paparazzi there on his trail, but easily Danzi escapes. And so hey, far, it's just been a chase game. Both sides, by the way, have really great disengage, right? Because you have Navaria that can go just right through walls. You have that CC you can Ooh, speed up. Was of course, has the passive. That's fine right now. But, uh, yeah. And on the other side, you have Mathilda, who can basically teleport her whole team out of the fight. So it's uh, it's been it's been great pick so far. I, I think I'm really going to enjoy these team fights. Yeah, these team matchup. fights are... This, this matchup seems like a much more even matchup, especially given the fact that both the teams have enough sustain in these team fights that can be extended quite a lot. And you hear right now, Matilda trying to reach a level 4 power spike, but priority towards Team Mirage in this turtle. But Danzi Man has something else to say about it. Going in with the Kinjuts, trying to get the Devastator on. Does have the Ooh. Demon Thorn. Will he get the enough damage to get that turtle with the Retribution? Enough. Aggression he, going he's in. He's not going to run out of energy, surely. No, Ooh. he steals it. He's he steals it, he does it, oh my god. That was first blood going in towards the Nana Circle. Coming, in. coming out. Sram and taking low. Shino taking low as well. Mm. They're going so aggressive. Saki, will he get it with the Wisp? Oh, yes. yes, they do. They get two kills and the turtle with that aggressive play coming in. Nana was the MVP. You can say Bloods right on time with the Molina and the Molina Blitz are doing so much damage, so much. Just the transformation is just too much. And it's crazy, like, Danzi was out of that demon blood as well. He was spent like a squeezed orange, but he still just kept himself in that fight. He got that turtle stolen, and he continued on with just his main body, meleeing them forward and forward. But now Danzi's in a rough spot right now, but gets out thanks to Mathilda. Like he's in the right place at the right time. Nikki already popping the Blazing Due, though, and it does quite a lot of damage. BXK forced you back from here. That was too close for comfort for Dan's as Insomnia did use the torn apart memory, almost getting it, but the guiding wind, the heal coming in, the shield from Saki being the saving grace for Dan's. And right now, you want to see in the bot lane, Stram trying to protect his gold laner, but I think they're going to go for the all-in here. Yeah, Three weeks two, that's another kill going in towards Blood. Circling Eagle, will they be able to survive? Sram will have to back off. He's trying to scram out of there, but will he be able to use they're the same him. They're harassing a tank right now. They're able to get that turret for free. Yeah, and a kill. Just, before four minutes, it's actually really impressive because you still add like full gold platings as well, and they just melted it down right now. And well, the Tigreal, all he can do just now is watch it. And that was really unfortunate here. I think, I think Mirage still have a chance in this game. XP lane matchup was favoring Shino, uh, but because uh, Shino was just forced to get away from that to help out his team, it's not really looking too good. Oh my oh, god! Oh. Look at Saki with full dive. They're getting the second kill as well. Furky, King Cory diving into that, yes. and that's that looks like it's over already. 
Oh my god, that was so beautiful coming in from Saki. Folks, if you want to watch the display of Matilda, I know you want to go towards MPL Indonesia, MPL Philippines, but you have to watch Saki right there. That was such a beautiful play. Using Circling Eagle on towards SRAM and using the second part of the Circling Eagle, I think it was to go on to Insomnia Furuki. I can't even... Oh no, it was on from BXK on towards SRAM. That was so beautiful. Yeah, absolutely great. That was a predator eagle from coming out from that Matilda, and then uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm from the blue as well to just to solidify no escapes there. And Mirage, they're down 0 7 right now. Not a huge goal loss right now. It's still early game. Okay, so uh, yeah. I mean, his, his movement on Matilda is insane, and that's so nice to see right now. They don't have damage. Blazing duet from Nikki into the back line with the BMI as well. Will he get out of it? Yes, he, he does. does. Shino totally. trying to do as much as he can, but once again, Dan's a with that. That's the corrosive strike I was talking about. Trying to make create a separation. Flickers out of there. Does he have enough damage? Torn apart. Memory will not take him, and nobody will fall. Just a lot of ultimates being used. Trading HP, and they will have to recall right now and reset. But where are they trying to go for more? Doesn't seem like it. They will have to back off. This game is much more entertaining than the first, even though it seems a little one-sided, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, they definitely wanted to re-engage, right? Because that split split was, uh, I think it was used to kind of like re-engage. It was half HP, he's full HP right now. I can clear out that bottom lane, but... Um, yeah, it's it's the problem right now with Iconic Crew. I think they might want to get a little bit too over-eager. They're committing themselves a little bit too much into these fights, like we see here, eating up these tower shots and just... Uh, melting their health bars they'll be too easily here bxk's shot goes nowhere Ooh, sram they're almost getting the sacred hammer nikki once again trying to go into his back line use the bmi in the back just to make sure he'll be able to get out of harm's way danzi, danzi again Ooh. full paquito combo landed onto you there's no nothing you can do there buddy that that, that was that was really aggressive coming in from danzi Playing with fire right now. On the top side, Molina, Vengeance being used as well. Shino, will he survive? Yes, he does. No, will go fall. That, yeah, I think Iconic who are just running away with it right now, Ryan. Yeah, too much stuff here. Bloods is, uh... <laughs> Bloods, Bloods is not for Blood. I think him from behind as well. And 8-0 at the moment. Again, no river control. I think even less than they dreamt of before the game here for Mirage. Insomnia being hunted again. It's just Danzi's... <laughs> Kage chasing him. Still some blood energy left here and he finishes Whoa. up that kill. I'm not sure was it with the main body or he just transformed after the kill, but you never know, Danzi. We've seen it. He can just go into that melee form as well with Hanzo <laughs> and just chop the enemies down. Two times in a row, but I mean on the top side, Furky almost getting the full knockout strike on towards Nikki, but able to get out of there using the BMI, they will get the turtle for free once again. Nikki's just soloing it like yeah, that's the control they have over the river. They're just waiting for the other teammates oh. to arrive. <laughs> okay, yeah, Saki is maybe a little bit too forward here. Uncomfortable area for him and nowhere really to go from here. But Danzi, again, just going so far and far away and Almost getting Shino, actually. That was inches away from the kill. Ram melted like he isn't a tank at all. Insult to injury that was torn apart memory. They're even doing the recall taunts right there. Split split coming out. Just as right. Blazing duets onto the back line. But the vengeance. Will he survive? Knockout strike. Will he go? He gets the jab. Almost getting just not enough damage. And the Astro like, the recall. Missing out as an Astro Ico to slow them down. To make sure that they don't recall. Dan's once again going in with that shadow form the Kinju to try and do a lot of damage but gets the structure instead playing a little smart this time want to get this game over a little earlier a little cleaner maybe compared to the first game yeah now, uh, maybe a beast belly from uh mirage here a little bit astroloco came out a little bit too late they maybe could have paired up something with insomnia there but uh, they didn't want to aggress again i understand they're probably scared of the whole situation on the map shino's gonna go down oh. here nikki gets a kill is too all right now almost unstoppable we can see he's uh, prodding very deep enemy territory all the time he's gonna take two players insomnia. on here insomnia might go down here will he go back to the oh. yes he will but Furk is here and punches him down flat on the ground and gets that malefic roar as well as a benefit from that fight meanwhile though the tower is being punched away by an ice cream man at top 
Oh, there again. Once again, onto a BXK. Yeah, this Hans is going in. Bloods. I'm not sure what he was thinking right there. Going in too deep. The pacifist proc guiding him to get out of there. Corey, will he be able to get out as well? Well, there you see the vengeance coming in. Circling Eagle was used. Pass pass coming in. Split split along with the flicker. So aggressive coming in. He gets the grab. All right. And right now, will he be able to fall? No, he doesn't. He's guiding in once again. Flicker implosion coming in. They finally will be able to get glue. And at the moment, Saki is able to survive. Circling Eagle out of there. Slight bit of HP with the shield. Furky, though, will he want to go for the chase? No, he does not. They have to take care of their side lanes and before they even prioritize the Lord. So they have something in return to the side of Team Mirage. Yeah, so th they have the answer, right? Especially like when there's uh, Nikki diving in. I mean, I don't know what Blaz was doing there. <laughs> but basically... Right now, you know, you see the meta in rise in the favor of basic attack marksmen. Like we see uh, Claude, we see Ixia, we see uh, Carry, basically. And to answer that, you know, we have these uh, is these tanky fighters like CC, like Arla, who can do a very good job with pop their oh, and, and fast. Last longer in the fight, Ram is being traded away. Shino goes down first here. Danzi takes the kill to his name. And I think Reston Mirage doesn't want to have anything to do with this fight. Over here in Tomne is just stuck between a rock and a hard place or rather that hard place being that ice cream man King Cory doing a really good job with the glue as well constantly yep. positioning so the enemies can't get away and the stuns land with the slams 13 to 4 right now 11 minutes on the clock and it seems unrecoverable for Mirage Consolation prize though was the side of Team Mirage. They get a Lord marching out of bot lane, so they are able to extend this game for a bit. The goal lead was about 7.5 to 8k on the side of Team Iconic Crew. Now they've reduced the deficit to about 6k, and so they're trying to fight, try and claw their way back and scratch their way, claw their way back into this team, into this game, into the series. And uh, there's the Conceal play coming in. Sram going for the Sacred Hammer. Will he get the implosion? Yes, he does. Ooh. They finally get the kill on towards Bloods. That was being such an annoying prick in their side. But there it is. You see the full knockout strike. BMI on towards Nikki. the backline with the blazing so away. Nikki, though, will he be able to survive? Yes, he does. Once again, they're trying to go circling. Eagle, Saki, Sacred Hammer from Sram. Will they be able to get them? No, he does not. Guiding win. Flicker out of the way. No blazing duets from Nikki right now. Seems like they're just trading HP. Furky going in for the knockout strike on the jab combo. But will he have enough damage? No, he does not. Split, split just to disengage. So seems like they are buying themselves some more time. Or is it just Iconic Crew choking once again? Yeah, I think in that fight particularly, just Nikki wasn't doing a lot of damage to these uh, tankier heroes like uh, Tigreal and also that CC who have built a lot of uh, physical defense that CC actually, yeah, has brute force. Uh, breastplate has also uh, damage, uh, damage shield, uh, damage reflection. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a bit harder for Nikki right now. But uh, that just means Danzi has to uh, trying to find that backline again. B B X K gonna be the target. Insomnia going to be the target. And if you take them out, these tanky oh. heroes can't last forever, right? And she knows going to be the first target. Furky, well he can't stun that ghost for a little bit but he's going to be back in just a little bit again and he's going to be back even angrier and you just know that yeah gonna be back before the lord which is the most important part and like you said they do have the physical defense but not enough magic defense and molina blitz from this nana was doing all the damage in the world and right now danzi trying to be a nuisance once again but will he get caught no, he will not. We'll have to back off. Once again, they're just trying to poke them and move them away from the river to get that control in the Lord Pit. And we have about five to seven seconds to look at the items at the moment. And you see that they need the armor penetration. And Hanzo has Danzi has picked up this Malefic Roar. And so will Claude and Nikki in the next few minutes. Yeah, the CC is really hard to kill, right? Blade armor is no joke, especially with Vengeance. This, this is like how you build Tank Joy, right? You're, you're gonna be lasting really long in the fights and you're just gonna be that mirror to uh, delete the squishies because you just have like triple their health and that's still gonna be a very easy lord here uh, no river contest whatsoever from mirage they're just hovering around these pushes Furky trying to go in trying to land at least one combo Danzi replying and look at that damage coming out Furky has no chance because he's building all damage and he's just running away frantically but there is Danzi on the chase he's going to be here surrounded Gino. by the 
surrounded by the Mathilda. Surrounded Is by gonna Sandy. You thought you were gonna see some escape coming in from the Manny Pacquiao, but not able to get out of harm's way. Will fall. That was quite a chase coming in. They wanted the kill. They wanted that blood coming in from the side of Team Iconic Crew. Right now, the Lord marching in from the top lane. Will they be able to get it? Sacred Hammer coming. Molina Blitz onto his Insomnia, who will go down. The Circling Eagle is there. Is the Predator Eagle, like you said, Ryan. They want the blood. They want this win. Yeah. Lord going in towards the base. The Anzi with the recall taunt. They have nothing to do the base is gonna fall and yes it does uh, team iconic crew getting a much cleaner game this time 2-0 victory and uh, we'll see themselves going up in the table or staying in the same position but definitely putting a mark in this crown league i am i am just so incredibly surprised that that hanzo worked almost flawlessly two games in a row there's nothing you can do. They they basically built their composition around trying to deny that hands on now, Mirage. Like, you, you got that Tigreal, you got that Paquito, and you still could do nothing. And this is illustrated by that KD of Danzi as well. 7-0. 7-0. You take a look at the damage that he did. 34%. 76,000 damage coming in from this Hanzo. 30% on towards third. And guess what? 59% team participation. But if you look at it, I think if you don't count the glue took the most damage as well yeah that means he was everywhere all at once right he was he was always present every team fight he was always poking them out and uh, dance has just been that glue of that team and i think he has most kills of the team as well so far by statistics and so, of course some other positions have been playing uh with uh, subs so far for iconic crew but yeah dance has been doing such hard work and that was definitely a very deserved victory for Iconic Crew. That gives them extra three points in the table. They're not yet catching up to top esports, but they're getting there. Yeah, but at the same time, let's not count out Team Mirage. They had the right idea. They had the right strategy. The execution just wasn't there. It is their first game in the league. And right now, if you give them a... They, ha they don't have much time, but they have to think quick. They got to get together really fast. But if they do, they will be able to... You know, make them claw their way back into the t into the top half of the table. But right now, they had the right idea. It's just maybe too much for them in the first game. Maybe just nerves. What do you think, Ryan? Probably yeah, probably nerves. nerves. I mean, the drafts weren't too bad. I think the first draft was kind of kind of in the graveyard because of the gourd, and there's there was no way really to deal with the Hanzo right here. I'm not sure what happened. You know, maybe a little bit too little damage, right? And I think the gold lane lost its uh, lost its lane a little bit too easy as well. Insomnia didn't really have any pressure whatsoever. Uh, he wasn't even ganked until the river fights were won. So maybe it was a little bit of that gold lane gap as well coming out. Nikki did a very good job on uh, on the Claude, but that's why it's meta as well. Mirage, I think we can applaud them definitely. Like you can see, they're drafting well, they're playing well together, and uh, they're confident. That's what matters, and I hope they continue on on the same path. They can definitely grab a victory or two. Right now, we do see that Team Mirage, like you said, they played well, but I think. Maybe the itemization, they they were not just, they didn't respect the damage that came in from Bloods. Bloods was, I mean, you could say, arguably the MVP of the series. Yes, Danzi played, played out of his brains just with his Hanzo. But at the moment, I think Bloods was just all over the place as well. Molina, Molina Blitz, they just didn't expect that sort of damage coming in from this tiny little mage. Absolutely, yeah. Bloods, uh, Bloods did a good job. We saw that... Uh... Um, we saw that as well before. Um, I think Buzz yeah, did a, definitely a good job. Everything is just dying in very well. King Cory as well. Wasn't even on the main, wasn't on the CC, but uh, always ever present as well. And here we can see the table as well in front of us. Uh, here we can see top esports in top four right now. So they're not the toppest yet, but they're getting their iconic crew then. On uh, 10 points, I think this hasn't been updated, so they should have 13 right now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So they will have 13 points, but it seems like, yeah, so they will be in fourth place. But Top and... Esports also got third third points today, so yeah, they're still oh, trying to behind just a little bit, yeah. Oh, okay. So I think it's really close. It's really close. I I'd like to put my money on maybe Gremor or Sendo EU, just because I like their names. 
What about you, Ryan? <laughs> this, is the most, uh, this is the most based answer you can give, yeah. It's not, hey, not why being slighted, yeah. Nah, yeah, I, I'm, I, I like top esports just because of Live Prince, but yeah, I, I feel I like whoever really gets the player. best chance at representing Europe on a higher level, just like Rogue had in the past, I feel like they have to win, they have to get that uh, a, a glory in MSC as well. So whoever stays together, doesn't have any drama in their team, uh, that team deserves to win. Yeah, true, who doesn't have any drama, that stays together, understands, communicates, and I think top esports, like their name suggests, is up there, the top teams. I believe most of their losses did come up from a withdrawal, they did forfeit some of the games. So if they are not able to, if they're there on time, they should be able to compete with the best teams. If not, they are the best team. But I think if somebody gets iPrints in the game quite early, you know, gives a hard time to iPrints in particular, I think they'll have top esports number. But iPrints is just a, such a great mid lane player. Yeah, absolutely. But I guess that will be it uh, for tonight. We have, of course, uh, new games coming up. For game week uh, eight as well, there's some uh, great games coming up. Uh, Ascendo meeting Top Esports, for example, that uh, will be an intriguing matchup, a complete derby, if you will. Something to watch out for. Maybe we get to cast that once again, don't we, Ryan? For yeah, absolutely. Oh. And thank you for thank you for, for you for you. Us as well. I mean, you made this one really enjoyable, and I hope the viewers enjoy that one as well. Yes, I hope they did. And likewise, Ryan, you made this enjoyable for me. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, just make sure you subscribe to the channel, the TikTok, and join the Discord to make sure you stay updated with all the matches that will be going on throughout the week. But as for now, this is Kronos and Ryan Rumbles that will be signing off. You have a great rest of your Sunday night and have a great week ahead. Yep, bye-bye.